Testing, testing, one, two, three. All right. Okay. Hi, everyone. All right. Ignition. Hello again, Ellen. <laughs> and <laughs> Good day, everybody. Good and evening. That, through that. Evening. Good evening. Ryan. Evening. Hello. Hello, hello. We got Dana in the house. Let's see. Hey, everyone. Nice to see you all. Dana. Hello, hello. <laughs> Tulani, Rachel, Ellen, Michael, Jesse, Kent. Looking good. <clears throat> Does everybody have access to computers and uh, got to read emails that I sent? Hello, Freeman. Freeman. Yes. How's everybody? Oh, you know, living the dream. <laughs> hey, that was a that was a cool um, that was a cool app you sent, Brian. I uh, I checked it out. I had never seen that before yeah i'm i'm new to it sometimes when i can't sleep you just punch it somewhere and there it is you know it, rem it reminds me when i was a kid i had a transistor radio um a little this tiny little radio right and i used to put it under my pillow when i went to sleep uh <laughs> when i was going to sleep and listen to baseball games or or sometimes talk shows that would come from all over the country. You know, I could get reception even someplace down south. It was it was so cool. That's it's cool. Pretty, I grew up in Ohio and I used to climb out on my porch and point well, my radio and I'd get WBZ cousin Brucey. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and I'd listen to like the Beatles or somebody like, and then I'd run to my music store and they go, we never heard of those <laughs> weeks and weeks. And then finally the band would come out, you know? Right. That's great. Yeah, trans. Uh, oh. Let's see. Let me go like this. Let's see if this will help us. Anybody else in the cold room? <laughs> <laughs> I have to keep my living area above 69 degrees because of the birds sure. so yeah I'm, ha I'm living i'm living la vida loca over here you're close to you honey, huh? i had to do something like that with lizards also, <laughs> it's nice hi. it's nice hi <laughs> i just bake some some new cook some cookies oh and then i put a little dolce de leche ice cream on there that's a little treat Nice, I'll send you my address so you can go <laughs> one for it. I got some deliveries there, bro. Mm -hmm. We'll all eat together soon. Hopefully yeah. by, by next fall grant round. I'll make sure to be um, to I got a new mixer for Christmas, so creaming butter and sugar is like so easy now. Mm. And I don't mind it. So I will be baking. <laughs> What kind of cookies did you make? Just good old fashioned chocolate chip cookies. Oh, with, can't go wrong. With dark chocolate chips. Sounds great. It's pretty, they're pretty good. I haven't made them in a long time. All right, we got Lori on. Hi, Lori. You got Kathy. Kathy's got a, you got a haircut, Kathy, or are you just growing it out? <laughs> you're, can't, you're, we can't hear you. You're, you're muted. No, I was just out shoveling the driveway, so I'm just, oh. I just got in and, okay. Kathy, you can ask me to come shovel your driveway. I'll go do it. Oh, you want to do that? Two driveways, honey. Yeah, I just, you literally, just call me. I will go and help you. You're the only person on this whole entire call that, that it's applicable to. 
I will come and help you if you ask for it. Okay. You, just, you know I'm not asking. I don't need to. Why not the rest of us? Because <laughs> Kathy does so much volunteering that I will volunteer for her anytime, any place, anywhere. So. Oh my god! Oh baby! Oh baby! <laughs> <laughs> god. Oh god. Anyway, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. If you should take them up on it. Yeah. I know I should, yeah. but you know, I'm not going, I can't, you know, I just, it's not me. My mind I rent, so I don't have to shovel. I have to shovel my deck and then oh, the God. landscaping takes care of the driveway and stuff. Yeah. So. Well, when you're the, the, the you know, whatever, yeah. but it's you're fine. Sure. It's fine. I'll come help. I'm, I'm okay. kidding. I'm not kidding. You, Hi, Danielle. Amen's on. Everyone. Who are we missing? Ashlyn, Dana. Ashlyn, Dana's here. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you guys hear me? Yep. 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 Okay, good. All right. All right, missing anybody? Michael's there. Um, I think we got yes, everybody. He is. You're here. <laughs> We're here. Mm -hmm. Uh Tulani and Dana, have you heard anything from the powers that be in the North City Northampton? What did you hear? Um, Councillor Labarge called me, I think it was last week sometime, and talked. And she said that they're interviewing and then they maybe were voting this okay. week. But she just kind of she asked me to write like a statement, an email to her, and then they go over it and go through the whole process. So she just kind of said like, watch your email. I think that's all I have to do. I don't know if I'm, am I supposed to do another like in-person or Zoom meeting or anything, or they just cycle it through? I'm not familiar with how it works in COVID times. Okay. I had so to do an in-person, I asked for a Zoom and I had to go to the county clerk's office, mask, <laughs> downstairs we stand apart and then they did it in person she swears you in and gives you blah 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 but i said okay. Can I do it zoom and she says i wish i could but you can't and then okay. she had a covid scare herself so i would think she'd push a little harder for that yeah uh, yeah for the, i didn't for ask you at all they just asked me if i was on, if i was interested and that was it <laughs> I got the That's phone it. call from one of the city council members, and after that, yeah, just, they were like, yeah, you're yeah, in. The, the next thing you have to do is, is going to be in person, but that, like what Kent said, but that's only after the city council has voted and everything. You don't have anything else that you need to do after the phone call. So okay. did, any, did anybody have to put their hand on Calvin Coolidge's autobiography? <laughs> no. That no, wasn't part of it. No, his God, private diaries. <laughs> I won't do that. I can't. <laughs> uh, do we want to get started in the allocation? Everybody? Okay. Did anybody, everybody get a chance to take a little browse? I, I will share my screen right now. And we can take a look. Let me know if you can see my screen. Yep. Is it too big? No, it's tiny. It's what? You we can make it bigger. It's, it's like five point type. Even on my on my screen right now, I made it bigger. Yeah, you you have to individually make it bigger on your Zoom. You have to like, there's a little bar between the people and the the screen. Brian, are you um are you able to open up the whole sheet? At uh, one? I can, but I have like a 29 inch monitor, so I don't know what it's going to scale down to for Zoom. Right, to make it all. Who's watching can click view options at the top of your screen. And then you can click 50% or 100%. And you can also, as Ashlyn said, there's a little double gray line next to our videos. If you click that and drag it to the right, it should take up your full screen. Let's see. I don't know. You can also this. look at the, I can put the link in the chat in case you just want to minimize the zoom and look at it on your own screen. Annotate more. You have one of those wide monitors too, Brian. 
Yeah, I got one of those like, and it's like, I can see everything great, but I don't know how it looks on other people's screens. So I have new share. Are there any options that I can do, Danielle or, or Ashlyn, that would help me make you guys make it look better for you? Can you just up it a tiny bit? Uh, I have it. Okay, I can see. Let up me see. The size a bit. Self's larger. Brian, you can oh, command oh. plus. Yeah, I'm doing that right now on the on the browser. Yeah, that's good. Better. That's, that's better. better. Oh. Much better. Can't you can do it, it on your own screen too. You know. Where it says you're viewing Brian's screen to the right of that says view options and you can increase it there. Oh, except now it's so big that can't see the whole thing. Right. 50%. Well, if I obliterate everybody's face, I can. How's that? I'm good. Yeah. Anybody else? It's nice seeing the whole thing. But... Yeah. I'm gonna go like this. So we'll go over some. I have the. You see the cursor? Yep. Yeah. All right. So this is how much we have to give away up here. And as I put things in the award column, well, so it should. Hold on, let me fix that. Uh huh. Let's see. Oh, some used to work. And then this, this, and this, this. Okay. So as we put things in here, it should go down on the balance right here. Right. Okay. Okay. So I rearranged them to have the final scores with the highest final score to be on the top. Oh, good. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that we can approach the process. Freeman had an idea because I sent it to the grant subcommittee and I asked for some feedback on how we should go about the process. And then we could, this could be a democratic process as well. But Freeman had an idea. If you want to jump in, Freeman. Yeah, I just, um, I did the same thing that you just said you did. And, and uh, I organized by the highest score. And I noticed, <clears throat> excuse me, that, um, well, a couple of things. <clears throat> One, I thought we should have a, a process for how we have this discussion um, before we start really evaluating. Um, so just so that we're clear about what, what we could and can suggest in terms of modifications. Um, but maybe that will evolve as we go through it, I'm not sure. But the other thing I noticed was that if you go down to um, uh, the scores, the total scores of 12 and above, that's, and you, and you divide that into the total amount of money that we have, it's between four and $500 for each of those applicants. And I just thought that could be a possible way to start. Not, not as a final decision, but to think if we're thinking about the, the, the highest 40 applicants and giving approximately 500, it's about 450, I think, to each. And then we started looking at them more specifically about in terms of what they asked, were asking for, that might be one way of proceeding. That was the extent of my my brilliant and then, thinking. I mean, and then start knocking them off at the bottom, basically. Knocking um, them off or or deciding to give more to some and right. less to others. Mm -hmm. I like that. So ju it's just for clarification, are these all... Freeman, do you have a, a barometer for what the low, would we look at like the low quartile and eliminate those or would you say like scores under seven and just we just take them off our list for consideration um well i just <clears throat> i just looked at you know i just picked a number i i looked at the I, I looked at the scores and i noticed that um you know i i looked down to see what the highest scores were and i got to and i saw that 
I said, okay, so let's look at 12. That's about, that's more than half of the applicants. You know, that's nice to be able to award more than half of the folks some money. So that's 30, that's 34 applicants. So I just settled on, I just settled on that. And, um, and then I divided the money and then I thought, well, what if we just start use that as a baseline and, and, and for the sake of argument, at least for now, not include anybody below that. What we do in terms of eliminating people who have lower scores so that we can award those with higher scores more money, I didn't, you know, I haven't thought any more about that. But I just thought it would be a good baseline. Does that, does that answer your question? Yeah, I'm, I'm also wondering if we could say for sure that like scores seven and just take them off of our list so we don't have to look at them. But we, but I, but we can also just start with the high scores. I think that that's a great place to start. Brian, can you scroll down? How many are there that are seven and below or, you know, in the lower part? So I just transcribed exactly what was on the score sheets. So some of the one, ones that we quote unquote eliminated for not being uh, eligible because we're an arts council, some people still scored zero or 0.1 or 0.5. And I actually transcribed those. So okay. I think I think the bottom three are not eligible, but I'll, you know, when I'm doing a, the, the, the denial letters, I'll make sure that I delineate between ineligible, like we discussed, and then your score was uh, not as competitive as other, other applicant scores. For some reason, I'm not seeing that section of the scores in the master. You gotta go to allocation. Tab. Oh, okay. Where is that under? So uh, there's tabs, there's summary of applications, there's a score sheet tab, there's a final scores tab, and now we're in the allocation tab, which is the one, two, three, fourth tab on the bottom of the sheet, Ashlyn, on the bottom of the. Oh, I see, I see now. Okay, so we're there, and then I've sorted the applications. Um, so the, each, uh, merit score for, we're looking at the top of the, the highest scoring one right now, 42910 Tracy Burke, the merit is a average of all the scores that I, uh, I put into the final score sheet. That's their merit impact three feasibility. So that's our highest score applicant. So those are the averages of everybody's scores. And then I just add those three scores together to come up with the final score. So it's a, an average of what everybody thought about that application. And that's the 15.6 there. And then I sorted all of the, uh, the applications by high score to low score. And we've attacked it many different ways every year. And it, there's no, maybe we can codify a process, but it hasn't been codified yet. So um, whether we want to give everybody five and move on from there or just go from the top down or we can, you know, going from the, I don't, I don't know how uh, easy it is. We'll be go from the bottom up, but I think because of the scores, I think we should give, you know, the highest score, I think, because everybody agrees that it's a very worthwhile application. I think we should start from the top because then we'll, and then there's, after we, we exhaust funds, usually we can go back and see if there's some applications that got some more funds underneath. And then we can do some bargaining and figure out who doesn't need the money as much or, um, you know, things like that. Um, there is a lot less, uh, we've had this long standing thing since I've been part of the, of this, like kind of like of a seal of approval application. And it would be like, uh, usually like a huge big production that everybody knows is the nutcracker at, at the Academy of music. And they always, they usually always apply to us, but they, since they can't have it, they haven't, but we usually would they usually score high because it's well attended and they do a great job. But even they'll ask us for a thousand dollars, we'll give them two fifty because they really don't need it because they have great sponsorship, great ticket sales, and all the kids pay to be in it. But it's like we're we're affiliating our organization, the Arts Council, with something that is like a cultural kind of like epicenter or a cultural like you know thing tradition, and it's almost like us giving us little sponsorship so we can be affiliated with their brand. So that's my my explanation and the way I, I my experience with the seal of approval application. But all of these I see on here, I don't wouldn't think that they are that like not big organizations with like 
you know, $250,000 budgets are not applying this year. So I don't think that was going to be the case, but I wanted to bring it up just for future, um, future, just have it as part of the narrative of what we've done in the past and, you know, um, going forward. So I'll, I'll stop talking and uh, we can do it like an auction if you want. And I can give everybody five, like, uh, to, to 12 and up five, and then we can change it like that. Or we can look at the request and then give up, you know, maybe because the, you know, I would suggest the highest scoring application asked us for $500. It's not a lot of money. And they scored 15.6, which is really close to a perfect score that we give them $500. Definitely. Yeah. Does yeah. anybody have any objection to that? No. Okay. Any okay, I'm gonna start there and be allocation perfect. 2021 is underway. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Um I uh, Brian, I just wanted uh for like context, I believe in the past few rounds we've awarded around 30 applications. Does that sound correct to you? Even uh, uh, yeah, you can go. Um I can send a link right now to everybody and we can get an idea of uh yeah, I think even less. Yeah, 27, 29. Like, I think it's been in that range. And which isn't to say that that's where we're going to land tonight. But just for context, that's, you know, we've we've gotten somewhere between like 70 and 90 applications and awarded about 30. All right, I'll put this in the chat right now. I got a lot of chat going on. I really see this. Here, this is our history of grant giving up until last fall. And we can see, and you can go through all of them. Um, Dana will be, the, okay. Gotta keep the chat up here. Um, okay, back to this. Keep that in mind. That's good to keep in mind. Um, so I'll just keep us going. Uh, Northampton Parent Center uh weekly drop in music classes for families with young children their budget's 4300 they want 1600 dollars for us from us it scored 15.1 i suggest 950 does anybody second that yes second anybody does anybody third that i'll third it do we have uh, any objections or any other amount that somebody wants to, to put up there? Not yet. Okay. I, and again, this is not final. We're all going to vote on the thing. We can always go back and change it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look for seconds and thirds and, and any objections and we can keep on moving. And then we keep on moving down and then we can juggle stuff. So again, this is not, we're just trying to, get the process going. Uh, Forbes Library, Decode and Disrupt, reading children's books critically. They, their expenses in $900, they requested $900. Um, their score is 14.9 out of a possible 16. Uh, uh, I, does anybody wanna make a suggestion? 500? I agree, seconded. Yep. I would suggest, um, I know that we're the only funding source on this one, but I would suggest a little higher. So 600, yeah. I was gonna say 750, but we can also come back to it later. I, I, well, I'm not even on this board, but I, I, I second 750. I'll oh, third 750. <laughs> Seven, okay, so we got, we got, so you wanna meet in the middle? Seven, what's between 750 and 500? And then we can come back to it. 25. 625. 625 is everybody comfortable sure. with that yep. yeah okay good again not not set in stone here okay I, we have I, uh, I also just want to jump in and and like encourage those who presented a category to call on your knowledge of those applications because uh to brian's point that you know there are some applications where this grant is going to determine if the program happens or not and there's somewhere it's you know it's going to happen regardless and if we you know so it's there's different implications for cutting the the funding amount and so um any any uh background knowledge you're able to to remind us of as we go through is appreciated yeah throw it in there uh i believe it says vic but i believe it's vic Cazeta, right yeah architopia 
expenses 5500 request 1895 um they scored 147 out of 16 uh any does anybody want to make well, a, if we're if we're basing this on the score and a 14.9 got 625 then maybe a 14.7 should get 600 does that make any sense to anyone no <laughs> okay not at all because that's not that proportion to cost so this is something that I've been struggling with before we started, and I've been trying to think like if it's a really strong proposal in my mind, like what it what if we looked at fifty to seventy five percent of the request, depending on amount, and I think when we, we won't have enough money. Oh well, we, we might if we only fund the strongest proposals, and depending on the amount requested. So I think it's good to start okay. with this baseline, but but. I am like finding myself really struggling with this process without a rubric of like top scores get 50 to 75% of whatever we can afford or mm -hmm. whatever. But, but yeah, Vic's project, I, I see your logic. And by that logic, the previous application is getting um, uh, approximately 70% funding right. and I don't know that we have the full we I don't know that we can necessarily fund 70% of the 1895 request but 50% would look like you know $900 right uh -huh. ish I I, 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 I I'm in support of Danielle's logic that's how we've done it oh, for a long time I think looking at I, the need and the, and and I want to just second what Danielle said and also say we're, we're funding 70 percent of the entire expense of the Forbes library which is a multi-million dollar institution and uh and we in the request for their entire budget if we fund six hundred dollars it'd be like what is that like ten percent of their entire expense so we have to keep that in mind as well not only the request but the entire expense and what part we play in it so there's a couple different factors Lori going into I think what we're determining yeah. to give us an award Maybe we should just look up uh, what they would do if they're not fully funded. We could do that if somebody can get on a a, a computer or like the the login and just you know. I'm on, see. A, I'm on it for Vic. I just went to his page. There. For the next one. Brian, based on what you said, do we want to reevaluate and do Forbes at 500 for for this until we get a bigger sense of where things are at? Um, I don't, I'm not yet. I like to save some in the pocket for when we want to extend for like, I want to get to that 12 and then see what's right below and see if we really want to push for some, like some people want to push for some to funding some of those grants that maybe just slip below the 12 one. So that's, I think the logic is really good there, Jesse, but having that extra 125 to maybe like shuffle things around to get a, a couple more grants funded on the bottom is what, you know, something I like to like keep, but that's good logic. I like where you're going with that because it is a big institution that is city funded in multiple sources, but yeah. So we can have that conversation. Um, uh, so I, since nobody's, uh, I, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna suggest 1350 on um, Vic's grant until Ellen reads. Oh, here, I'm sorry. Um, it says that um, he's wait. Oh, he's applying there, oh, there, there. Hmm? There, oh, there. I, I remember this. <laughs> um, they're applying for creative capital in February, a residency that gives travel and funding opportunities, as well as other searching for other sources of financial funding. Um, this sounds like it's going to happen. Okay. So. Um, I say thirteen fifty as a baseline to start. Um, the second, second, second that. I need. Do I have a third? Yeah. Uh, yeah, third. Okay. Okay. Good. We I'm not voting, it. of course. But. Yeah. Well, it's well. It's again. This is dem democracy at work, and then we can go back, and then the final vote is the most important thing we're doing here. Right now, we're just trying to like you know, kind of like barter our way down, and we want to support the applications that are, are high scored. So. Um, uh, Diana Alvarez bridge song series. The request is for $2,000 out of a $3,200 budget. Uh, they scored 14.6. Um, uh, the request is 2000. Does anybody have a, uh, 
This is an auction, so just name your price. Twelve hundred. Twelve hundred. Do we have a second on twelve hundred? Thousand. Thousand. Do we have a second on a thousand? I'm just I, curious. I why. second a twelve hundred. Oh. Third. Or third. Oh. For twelve hundred. Okay, so we have a second and third on twelve hundred. Any third. objections to twelve hundred? Yeah. Twelve hundred. Oh, no. Okay. No objections. Okay. Moving on. Uh, and again, we can, this is not set in stone, everybody. Okay. Then we're going to Valley Arts Mentors, Artist Mentoring Program and Webinar Series. Expenses 5140. Uh, request is for $600. Scored 14.2 out of a possible 16. 400. Second for 400. Second. Third. Second. Third, Third for 400. <laughs> okay. Objections to 400. I kind of think we should just fund the whole thing. And I sort of think we should fund the full amount of the first application too. Like but we can go back, right? Yeah. I would I would agree. I would just go ahead and do the full six right there. So Rachel has we did fund it. They've requested five hundred for the first one. Oh, sorry. I didn't see that. There's a request and expenses. Yeah. So we did fully fund the first one too. So there's uh four hundred and there's six hundred. So where do we want to go? I, I go say 500. <laughs> I find with six. I'll second four, six. Four, six, 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 four, six, 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 six. Okay, so I'm going to say six. How many people want $600? 600. Raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, $600. Keep it moving. Ryan, how are you seeing us and the screen at the same time? Because I have a laptop that's hooked up to a 29 inch screen oh, or 27 inch screen. So okay. I have two different okay. desktops and it's great. <laughs> yep. Because I was. I have Brian. Yeah. <clears throat> before. Brian. Yes. <clears throat> be before we go to saying agreeing on that amount, what what other sources of funding are they looking for? I think uh, that's important consideration for us as well. I'll tell you. Is this Diana? No, for it's no, Valley Arts Mentor. This is Valley Arts Mentor. Four five one seven seven. Four five one seven seven. Okay. Budget. Um, how you will adjust the project? We will seek additional sponsorship support from local businesses. But are they also um, are they the other... in there? And they're applying to. Southampton, East Hampton, Granby, et cetera. Right, um, and that's why I think the lower amount is more appropriate. Because mm -hmm. they're not just looking from us, they're looking for other significant number of other. 14 um, other councils. My, my, uh, I, that's a good point. And the, their whole budget's 5140. And I think education and um, artist mentorship, it should be a priority of our council. Yeah. um so and that's that's what they're doing so for the for the extra 200 i would i would ob object to the 400 but yeah. yeah also mentioned is that this there are three mentor mentees so that's this one right where there's going to be three mentees so that's supposed to be us paying for three people from our town for that one. Oh, this that's kind of cool yeah so I think paying the full for this will, it, 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 I don't know, it reflects more that it it's going to have a direct uh, like effect on the town. Smart marketing. It is smart. Um, but I think when we, we can readjust in the future, because uh, it's a matter of $200, I don't know. Um, do you think, how do you know they'll be successful at those other towns yeah. or have they been funded? No, they already have three um, sponsees from our town and they are, this is going towards a stipend for the sponsor, for the mentees. Sorry, I got, got mentees it. and mentors. So it goes towards the mentors. So each mentor yep. can pay 200. So that would be three got for it. our town. Um. Is everybody comfortable moving on and maybe reevaluating it in a little yep. in a little bit? Okay. Yeah. Sorry, Freeman. Uh, okay. 
<laughs> Nick Verity, Northampton Arts Archive, uh, requested fifteen hundred dollars. Expenses are twenty one hundred. Fourteen point one out of sixteen. I mean, yeah, a possible sixteen. Any thoughts? Eight hundred. I would go higher. Outside mm -hmm. income coming in anywhere else? Any, any, uh, yeah. What's, what's if they don't have? What doesn't happen? What's the other income? And does any? Is there a second on eight hundred? I raised you nine fifty. All right. There's not a second on eight hundred. We got a nine fifty from Danielle. Is there a second on nine fifty? I'd still like to hear where else they're getting funding from, if anywhere else. This okay. is um, 40214. This yes. is, yes, correct. Um, he just says we will seek additional sponsorship support from local businesses. Wait, let me make sure I'm in the right grant. Isn't that what I just said from the last one? I trust the local businesses. 40214, Northampton Arts Archive? Yeah. Um, okay. Um, I, I will look for other sources of contributed income and explore additional fundraising from various donors. Any um, other? They, they haven't applied to any other local um, LCCs. Yeah, this was very Northampton specific. He's filming the art exhibitions at a APE. Right. Oh, that's right. And Oh, that's important. It's also just not a lot of, like his request was not very much money for the amount of work going into each one. So to under fund it is to just underpay the artist, you know, it's just. Yeah. Um, Are they affiliated, is, it, oh, is the artist affiliated with Northampton Open Media? Are they renting equipment there? I don't know, is this the one, Rachel, um, that they did um, Nanny Vonnegut show? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is the young young guy. Yeah, okay. I mean, I was leaning toward like 1200 at a minimum. But I also I also like lean toward wanting to fully fund projects and I know that I'm an outlier in that cuz it means that we then get to fund less. So the way I see it is when we don't fund the full amount that they're asking for it's because we want to fund more projects and I think that's a worthwhile endeavor but I do think it you know there's a fine line um so you want to put it within reach huh? yeah because also people put thought into these applications and they we're tasking them with building a budget that's realistic and asking for an amount that they need and then to basically never fund anyone the full amount is I, I just think it's tough I think it also creates uh need and for them to find other sources of funding is a, an essential skill uh and not just relying on the the city to fund it fully so there's <laughs> that as well um i wish we had a hundred thousand dollars to give away and of course then everybody be asking for more money right yeah so let's do 1250. well can can i just ask a quick question this might be stepping back because i wasn't around for a discussion around this one but what is the what is the final it says archiving the the arts um, exhibitions, right? So where is it going to be archived? How is it going to be accessed? Is this for, you know, uploading online so people can um, see it, or is this talking about like putting it someplace and then people can view it at a location? And is that location? It's a good question. Possible? Yeah. At the time of the application, I didn't see like a set website for the videos. There was a YouTube of the ones that were made already and plans for um, the creation of more uh, of videos for upcoming exhibitions. Um, but I, thought the, I, remembered, I thought I remembered that APE was going to also boost it out through their social media channels. So, so that it's going to live online. Yeah, the project will provide a virtual platform to all who wish to engage with the Northampton Arts, specifically community member. Let's see, what else? Okay, I'd second 1250. I think we should move on. Yeah. So I, 
I have another suggestion. Yeah. Um, as a way of doing this in light of what Rachel was saying um, and has said uh, for the last couple of rounds of grants. Um, what if we looked at what would happen if we fully funded the top scorers? Yeah. And by the top scorers, I mean, you know, it looked to me like we would get down to about 20, where was it? 20, 22. I, I mean, line 22, the multi arts org, organization 44682. We, I think that would be just about the full amount of what we have. And then if we just look back at those and saw, are they applying to other places? Do we want to take money from them because of that? And then we could extend further down. I also like to, if we did that, I would also then like to add the litmus test for inclusivity to make sure that it's as equitable. Yes. As yeah, good point. Because I mean, that might be the way then to, to move away from this or that so that we're totally inclusive. I've got no no objections otherwise then. Yeah, I think yeah. that's a really good, good, good criteria to remember. And, and we should have like, whichever the system is, is something that is more finite and spelled out because um, like, like Kent was saying with the litmus test is like there's a lot of of like cisgender straight white members of the board and because of that whether consciously or subconsciously people have voted and because of the point system that has reflected that on this I, I already see it now so so we need some so yes accountability system is great and we should find a uh, detail to that just just for instance, um, after a quick computation, if we voted, if everyone got full funded, it would end at the Northampton Jazz Festival, um, meaning that the uh, Black women's leadership would not be funded at all. So I made a proposal in the chat to look at like tiered funding instead. So rather than like fully fund the, the, the top scores, the top 10 scores or whatever it is, what if we said that we were gonna do 75 to 100% of funding for the top scores? And maybe it doesn't have to be 75, it could be like 50 to 100% of the top scores. And then we can distribute afterwards, we can, we can distribute based on score. And obviously I think equity should be um, brought in and then cost. Does that? I feel like I, that's I feel exactly like we what, a, what we're kind of doing, <laughs> um, but without without a rubric. Well, it's well, almost a rubric. What should I do? I like that idea. I think that's. Uh, I, it, I mean, it, it's hard to take each one. Um, I think it might be easier to to plug money in and then move it around afterwards. And then where's the cutoff with that plan anyway? It just when the money runs out? I agree, Ellen, I think we should move on and, and reevaluate when we're a little further along because we're still at the very beginning. Well, I think, um, I know I just said, isn't that what we're doing? But I think that yeah. if we do type in like 75% on everyone until the funds are exhausted, Mm -hmm. um, then we'll be able to kind of go back and talk and we won't have as much dialogue wasted on uh -huh. what we're talking about right now. So if we at least input all those numbers, we can visually see where we end up and then take it from there. I know, Brian, you're doing 100% right now, but if after that- if Then I drop to 75, I'm dropping to 75%. Okay. And then we're like here, right now and there's only like 679 left yeah well with that with that with that uh at 75 percent uh so i did 14 and above 100 percent, and then i started to do 75 percent 13.8 well i did 100 percent for the 250 because i don't want to grant anybody less than 250 dollars mm -hmm. and then 
What if we do 80% at the 14 level and 75 at the 13 level? Okay. Or, or 70 at the 13 level? Uh, does anybody want, to, want me to do that? Yeah. So 80% at the top score or 14. So 100% of the top two and then 80% at the, the next. Yeah, all of the 14s at 80, and then all of the whatever, how many, however many 13s we can get at 70. I, I do think, though, that we could take into consideration that Forbes Library, although they are their, our top three, our number three scorer, has um, external funds. Mm -hmm. As much as I would love to just pay the full amount. Um, I or, I agree. So. so that would mean um, they're the least hurt by less funds. Yes. So I would say. Right. Right. But can't can't we get to that conversation after we see kind of where yes. we're at with yeah. this? Yes. Oh, Brian, I was saying seventy percent, not seventy. Oh, okay. We can change that. Well, I'm going to keep that because it's 250. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Equals this times seven. All right, so that gets us to about here. So that gets us to six, four grants. Nineteen grants. Wow. But so now that. Uh, for, I don't know. Formulaic is is gets you less because I think here's my before anybody speak. Here's what I you know the history of my experience with this. People know they're not going to get fully funded just because of how long we've been not fully funding Rachel, and they usually ask for more. And we used to I think board members used to even tell uh, tell the grantees to ask for more than they than they needed just because we don't we haven't fully funded historically so doing it on you know on the fly and looking at things it's difficult in trying to give a percentage but it just gets us more applicants funded i'm comfortable with funding 19 applicants if that's what everybody wants to do though um we can just fully fund the top scores and just tell everybody we fully funded all the, the, the top scores, but then the equity question comes into play. Um, what is, what are we? Well, can I mean, we take I, a look at uh, the ones that aren't gonna be funded at all in from 12 and above and see if there's anything that we're grossly missing out on? Youth Performance Festival, that's mentorship of young people. From our community. Naya's Creative Resilience Workshop, I would really strongly advocate for. Yeah, I would too. So um, I would suggest that we look at stretching out what we've got to, you know, cut, make the cutoff to 13. And so we're just trying to stretch our budget for a few more because um, there's no really discernible cliff anywhere. So I would suggest that we, what is that, like six or seven? to stretch what we our budget to c cover and just have 13 and up be what we fund and we can noodle around with the numbers in between there. I like that. Because That's I also okay. would like to fund their tests. I'm gonna okay. push for them. Okay. So, so that's the bottom of the 13s. Um, and then I, I will also take donations for grants from any board members right now, if you want me to put some money into the <laughs> municipal fund. <laughs> I'm ready. I can do it. I know the account numbers. Cryptocurrency? <laughs> yeah, I'll take, I'll take, 
Ethereum, I, Bitcoin, whatever you got. I got I will, a doggy coin for you. Yeah, I will make a I will make a matching donation of up to um oh god, I gotta think about it. I will make a matching donation if the board will match me to fund um one of our programs. Sorry, it's just coming out. I'm not I'm trying to find the <laughs> numbers here. I'm trying to find a program. Like a specific program. Or 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 add to the distribution pool, but but I'm thinking like if it means I have to pay for Naya's program for it to happen, I don't think I could really do two thousand dollars. But I would I would do. God, I gotta look at my bank account. I'll resume this in a sec. Job, Danielle. You don't have to do this. You already. But we'll I figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Okay. Um, so but I, I think I'd like to second what's on the floor right now and redistribute you down to um, that one that you're on right now, the, the 13. The TAC Fair Press, okay. Wow, I can't believe then uh, the little sculpture gardens thing gets knocked off, huh? That's tough. I'm kind of shocked by that too. I thought that was such a clear favorite in our- Don't worry, I- I, I, uh, I didn't hype it enough. Um, I donated $500 to the Art Trust. So <laughs> if that makes you any feel any better, Alan, and I also serve on their fundraising committee, so I'm okay with not giving them money for the planters. Yeah. <laughs> they, they've really, they, there's like $10 million of community money at the Arch Trust already, so I think they'll be okay with missing out on the planters in the front. So but they're so pretty. They're so pretty. They're, they're, but they're, it's all taxpayer, all individual donations. I think our community have supported that place, which I love to death. I'm not trying, I, you know, I love that place. I volunteer there. But I think they can figure out how to put the sculptures up. Yeah. Um, is there is sure. there any um, is there any grouping that does, that is not represented in these top few numbers? Like I see that dance has one in the mix, but is, are there any groupings that like they're not getting funded at all? That's a good. That's a good point. Yeah, I appreciate that question. All right. So let me see if we're going down to thirteen. I also have a question for equity as well. Okay. Um, regarding um, any uh, of, cause, cause a, a few of these have been, um, they've written in the application there, LGBT. And I'm just wondering how many are in there right now. In yeah. that right. Um, we'll go back to you. Are you looking at it on your, so one, two, can somebody look at their key for the- There's no three. 14. 14's getting funded a lot. There's I no think that's one. multi, multi. Multi. Disciplinary, multi. that's right. No fours and no threes. Ah. What are fours and threes? Fours were theater, right? Oh. Let's see. Where's, uh, the where's, where's the key? Brain is remembers incorrectly, which is possible. Well, I guess you didn't do such a good job, Ken, on presenting the theater grants. <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> I'm just kidding. What can I say? I want more folks of color doing theater. More queer folks, more folks of color. So if we go two more down, we would get one of, in the theater category. Is there any other category missing? Three was missing. Three. What's and three? three was what? What is three? I don't know. I don't we don't have any. We don't have any threes okay. in the That's list. There was no threes, no fours. Maybe that was humanities and science. Intro to the side trope, drop in music classes. Those are both threes. Those are the only ones I see up there. Oh, and we're funding those. Um, There's two threes being, no, no, they're not. I, I don't know, never mind. I, uh, I suggest we start negotiating down from the top to get to the 13. All right. Um, and then taking, trying to take inclusivity into play. Um, we have to do more than try. I'm just 
to open my yeah. Since, since you guys brought me in here, I mean, I'm 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 gonna beat the drum pretty loud. I mean, you have to do more than try in this day and age. Yeah. I I I didn't say I said taking inclusivity into account. I didn't say try to take inclusivity into account. Okay. Just so I just want to make sure that I'm not misquoted there. Taking I'm inclusivity into account. <laughs> Um, mostly it is taking money from the top to the bottom to, I'm saying, try to get to 13. And then at that point, we got to okay. get other monies around. So Ashton, are you looking at the LGBT grants and see if yeah, any of putting is? LGBT into the search, you know, no, I, I'm trying to look through, but I, I can't remember every single one. So if you remember, these are funded at 80, what are they, what is it? The top two are funded at 100%. These are funded at, the, the 14s are funded at 80%. The 13s are funded at 70%. Is there a formula I can use now that would be different? Should I fund the top ones at 90%? No. I don't think that's going to get us a lot. I no. think if we, we don't if 14s, think we're going to use up the money too fast. But what, if we did, what if we did 75% and 65%? How much more would that get us down to 13? Yeah, I, I would recommend 60 even. What about, I would recommend. What about for the parent center, the, uh, the, the second one, 1600? Why don't we drop that? Yes. $200, 1300 you know. What are you looking like at? That. The parents one? Yeah. Second one, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, do we want to go do why, a rubric or do we want to go individual? Because yeah. individual is going to take some money. money from, you know, this is a program they've been doing for years. I, I don't know where all their money comes from, I have to admit, but let me, maybe I should. Uh, their money, the money that they get the okay. money that they get, they get a small amount from the city, I believe. And they also get money from um, people who are dropping in, sometimes make donations. Right. Um, and they just recently did uh, a GoFundMe. So they are not, they are not um, adequately funded at all. It says here, we would ask local businesses and individuals for additional funding, reduce the number of classes, also reduce publicity. How long have they been around for? A um, long, long time. A long time. Long time. Yeah. So Over 30 gonna, years. If we don't fund them, they're not going anywhere is my only point. And they've, that's, they've, that's, not, that's not true. They happen to be, I happen to know that they're in a fairly fragile situation. I would okay. rather yeah. somebody in a fragile situation than like even like the library. I mean, I, you know, and music classes for kids just seems to be such a, I mean, there's not a whole lot of arts left. So I would advocate for something like that. So can we do minus 15% or minus 10% for places that already have adequate sources of funding? Uh -huh. so that would be Forbes. Hmm. Um, well, before we do the minus, I think we should settle on the percentages for the brackets the adjusted percentages for the brackets, and then we should go back and make the adjustments we need, including I agree. the application. I second that, I second that. Um, I was going to throw out there that what if we, since we traditionally do not fully fund everything, what if we started our top bracket at 75% working 10% down by point past that? So 14s would get 65%, 13s would get 55%, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Anybody that have would, any pro issue with that? Let's no, see I where it that takes good. us. Let's see where it takes us. Yes. Well, if we want to stretch it down, we're going to have to do it. <clears throat> well, while Brian is uh, entering in the formulas, um, I'll just say that I'm I am really in support of this percentage system. It feels yes. It feels like a better way to be doing it than yes, I kind agree. of being like, yeah, I think this should be nine hundred for the you know, like I think it it also I don't know to me it, it ties into an equity thing because other if you get into the ballpark of just shooting out a number 
for a project then the weight of like who's friends with who or who knows who can like enter in in a potentially inappropriate way and I think it's easier that's why we like it it's easier I also want to add that what we're trying to do is compensate for a category that we don't have so what Kent is pushing for and what Ashlyn was saying about looking for LGBT categories right is pointing to a deficit in our system right so we have merit impact feasibility if we had a score right now we're we kind of counted um impact our our inclusion metric is buried in impact and one of the things that grant committee is going to work on for the next time we do this is having a column for like equity contribution or inclusion contribution or maybe is this a historically marginalized subject or identity of the applicant maybe it's as as we do that at Community Foundation for Valley Creates. We created that extra category, right? And we don't have that column here. So, so I think there the percentages are great, and I obviously like love making it simpler. And we are missing a column, so we're kind of trying to sit on a chair with three legs right now, and we all have to put our foot down to make our chair stop wobbling. And <laughs> the putting of our foot down is actually looking through and saying like, oh, but where did we miss? Where did we miss? Where did we miss? So. I think it'll be easier the next time we do this because we'll have that extra value input, but we don't have it now. So I appreciate that everyone is trying to make effort to. Thank you for that, Danielle. Yeah. Thank you, Danielle. So I did what Mike said. We got the, the 15s got funded 75%, the 14s got funded 65%, and then the 13s are at 55%. And then we're 13s. There's like the bottom 13s are getting more money than like somebody who scored a 13 is getting $1,650 to somebody who scored a 15.6 who's getting $375. Um, which right, is interesting. right. Right, but we are going to talk these out and separate the money out. It was just a way for us to throw it at first. Sure. So we yeah. know what a spattering is. Um, um, Brian, what's going on with the balance there? It's 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 in we're in deficit. That's so okay. we we've exhausted the LCC funds, and then I think um, we can I can deposit funds from the ink into the LCC account to cover these if we need to do that, but. Um, keep in mind that, you know, we haven't been selling tickets for like, you know, since April, so since we're last four Sundays. $2,800 over. In deficit, in deficit, yes. Right. Oh, I see. <clears throat> From the state allocated funds, that's what we're in deficit of. Right. Yeah, Tulani well, just you... um, put something really, a really important question in the chat. <clears throat> um, and I think that's, I mean, I, I haven't been here since the beginning of this process, but that's on our own individual shoulders, right? Because these yeah, numbers are being question. produced by us. Um, so I think they're going to be part of the uh, conversation moving forward. And I'd love to hear other people that have been through this multiple times on their take. I think that Danielle just trying to address that, that we have to change our priorities in time for our next grant round to include uh, an inclusion or an equity score. I'd be um, happy at some time that, as I said, we created a rubric for Valley Creates for the Bar Foundation money to, and our mandate was to make sure that arts funding was equitably spread between rural and urban folks. So from the very get go, this is what we've been doing. So right. I mean, we'll have that conversation sometime with folks of how we created that in ways that we could use our own version of it based on you know the Arts Council's needs. But I think it's really important consideration. And I think also what Thulani raised at the same time is also having some way for under for marginalized communities to understand how to write better grants at the same time. And there might be 
maybe a webinar or something like that that we could fund. So anyway. So yeah, I think adding yeah. the column will all contribute to the overall score. And then yes, your point about like, well, how are we scoring on merit? So yes, we can, we, we do webinars. We can do specific webinars to folks from marginalized identities who are, or anyone who's new to the grant process. We, we have done them, but we can do them better. I think we also, and this is something I think Brian is going to raise later and it, it might be on the agenda. We also as a board need to interrogate the ways in which we are maybe falling into a little bit of um, unconscious bias in how we're scoring, yeah. right? right? So as a group, we are going to be doing different kinds of trainings and, and equity trainings as a group so that we can sort of interrogate our own biases so that as we're reading applications, like, oh, maybe I give that a high score because I actually know Zoe really well and oh I'm am I thinking about this person as um uh more likely to have a high project feasibility score because their name reads a particular way or they're affiliated with particular organizations or I know their parents right so those this, kinds yeah, of yeah, questions go on I'm sorry I cut you off Continue. no those are the kind of questions I think we all are gonna start um asking ourselves as a group and hopefully we'll I think we already are building some really good accountability structures so well as I I'm happy to share I mean this is the work I do this is I'm that's it, workplace culture DEI work so I'm happy to share information time etc to try to remove the whiteness factor and uh, the sort of the cisgendered factor out of the way of stuff so that we can be more equitable even in the way that we look at all of this. Also oh, that'd be as, great. Just as a person who is not very familiar with filling out grant applications when I did go to start uh, <clears throat> application for this grant um, there were a lot of things that I didn't understand. Um, so just speaking from an individual, from an artist that is looking for money, um, it's already very uh, imposing to try to fill out grants. Um, so any help that we can give to individuals um, doing it for the first time is so much more helpful. Mm -hmm. Amen. I, I also want to add that um, for everyone who presented a category and did the work of being in touch with the applicants, I know we it's usually the applicants, um, it's not usually the strong applicants that we need to reach out to. It's the ones that have, you know, where there's questions and things sure. like that, or maybe it is a strong application, but there's a, you know, clarifying question. So in theory, you may have already been in touch with, a, with some of the people who have not who are not going to be funded. And it's definitely within board member, um, you know, responsibilities to then, uh, if, if you are inclined to then follow up with the applicant and tell them the ways in which their application could be made stronger the next round. Um, as somebody who applies for grants, I could tell you it's, it almost never happens that you get feedback from a grant panel. And that feedback is really, so valuable so I, I would definitely like if you find in you know in your category there are people below the funding line here that you really think had a really strong application but just needed a little work i would definitely encourage you to reach out i think we you know maybe not tonight because we have such a packed schedule but we're going to need to i think just re you know evaluate the process at a meeting it should be on the agenda mm -hmm. and kind of go through you know what like stuff like that, reaching mm -hmm. out to people. What if we send out and with our letters of decline for these people, what if we say, if you email us back at this email, we can have a further grant review session with you one-on-one -on -one or something well, of that nature? I think it's a two-way street though. I think Rachel's proposal is accurate, but I also think what we're missing is the other half of the coin, which is it's also the way that we carry our biases into looking at these proposals. So I think before we target them, we need to at least clean our house, um, you know, and make sure that we're accountable to what we may be receiving back. Well, just as a, a quickie, like looking at the app, the applicants and I, you know, I'm sure I feel like I'm going to stick my foot, my foot in my mouth, but 
Go ahead. It's okay. I, uh, yeah, let me go stick my foot in my mouth. Right. Um, yep. When I get, when I, so I'll, I have uh, seven visual arts grants. I go through them right away. I make sure everybody's got supplemental materials. It doesn't matter who they are, whether they're white, black, whatever, gender um, identifying. It doesn't matter. I check that out. The next thing I do is I read them. And if I read them and I think, oh, the board's going to ask questions about this thing or this thing, I mean, I, that's what I try to do anyway. I go back in and I get in touch with them. So those are the kind of like tricks that I've learned over the years mm -hmm. um, to strengthen, to help them strengthen their um, thing. Now, the, the grants I had this year were really no brainers, every single one of them. They weren't difficult to present. I mean, you did misgender one constantly. But I did misgender one, yes. Yes. Multiple um, times. Uh, right. So, I mean, I had stuff to learn, obviously, and be more. Um, so, Brian, I have a I have a quick question. Did you write down uh, the initial numbers that we had already kind of talked about for the first few before you? Went back. Okay. This is a. I can somehow manipulate the Google thing, but I, I'm going to suggest a couple things. One of them, I think that the grant subcommittee and the equity subcommittee should come up with um, a plan to present to the board, and then we should discuss how we change the uh, grant LCC grant round next year. Um, that's the first suggestion. And then moving forward, because this is the allocation meeting, I would suggest that we even notch down the 15s to 70%, the 14s to 60%, and the 13s to 50%, and then see if we can fund some more. And then I'm going to suggest that the else they are our Inc fundraise funds, we, we cover whatever deficit and we get down a couple more grants, we give some more money out. Is, any, is everybody okay with this or is there any objection to it? My Brian, I'd, I'd, I'd like to come back to what you said, what you pointed out um, about the, the bottom two that are being funded in particular. Mm -hmm. So, and, and there's others, that's not the only one, but, but those two have asked for significantly more money than the majority of uh, grants above and they're funded because of the percentage and because it was a larger ask, they're getting a larger amount of money. I'm not mm -hmm. convinced that that's the most equitable way of going. I think if we're gonna do that, we also need to look at what's the average ask, you know, and, and mm -hmm. even that doesn't, even that doesn't get at, you know, the, the merit of the program and, and, you know, these other factors that we're talking about as well. But that concerns me, you know, that that, you know, those last two getting such a substantial amount of money because they asked for so much more. Um, however, just to throw in there, those last two are also the expenses are also the highest um, out of everything other than the Jazz Fest. Yeah. Um, so 15,000 and 31,000. The next one down is what, 7,200? So that's a that's a big jump, and I would assume that whoever, you know, in the process of of scoring these, that was taken into consideration at some point in terms of how expensive the programs actually are, and whether or not the request was um, relevant compared with the full expense. Well, I will say that I know Al, uh, Attack Bear Press has got is getting funding from a couple other sources. Um, I think he, their work will go on no matter what. There, I I like funding them. They've not been funded. They really have done some amazing work here in Northampton. But I I think that that huge amount that we're giving them could be knocked down easily. You know, you can give them a thousand dollars. Um, as long as we're supporting them. That's what I think is really important to support these marginalized communities, but sort of to spread that out, certainly like the, the grief work as well. I think that's above there. I mean, some of this stuff just seems to be, but I, you know, 
I, it's complicated and I, I don't wanna just sort of jump in here and, but that's just my opinion. It's just, I, 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 th I think it's not fair that they are so highly funded the bottom two. I, I think that's accurate and that's not probably right. Is there anything in the 12s that we really wanna fund? Yes. No. Okay, question. anybody else? What about the pride coral? Pride, yeah. pride course. Yeah. Yep. Well, the the uh, the SCD uh, interdisciplinary video dances uh, series uh, that's primarily focused on kids, you know, adolescents, um, and it's a and it, then they're they're doing an they're doing a, a really interesting outreach nationwide. Um, for kids doing videos um, and the access access if you've seen any of their performances they're really quite quite exceptional um, on, so, the same point, on the same point with that access access there was a lot of lgbt uh, and persons of color involved with that yeah um so i I'm going to suggest that we do 70, 60, 50, 40 for 12s. And then I'll see what we can contribute from the ink to just get to 12. Can mm -hmm. I, could this, do I have permission to do that and see what it looks like, everybody? No. Yeah, what it looks like. No, Rachel. What's up, we, Rachel? We've, we've still not like combed through to see if we want to make adjustments anywhere. So we can see how much funding that frees up as well. But yeah, I'm fine with you going down to the 12s, but I'm, once we do that, we should also come through because um, especially in that conversation about those last two grants, I think Caribbean Connection could also receive less funding and the project's yeah. still gonna continue. They are, um, they are um, they've put out a lot, several uh, to, to other LCCs. So right now, how we're standing, we're 88 in deficit. Um, so we can go from here. I did 40% for 12. And then what are we at for 55% for those? Do you want yeah, me to do? If you, if you decrease those, weren't you saying you're going to do 50, 60, and 70? So you need yeah, to. Yeah, I'll try those. that right now. And then we'll, we'll do the willy nilly. We'll go and then we'll do it a la carte, right? Mm -hmm. Can you repeat the, the breakdown of which tier? 70, 60, 50, 40. Starting from the top. So this top's 15. I have a logistical question about the deficit. What did you say, Brian? You usually do about that. If you go into a deficit, you mo can move funds around from our fundraising efforts, and I'm um, which is not usually what we do. We try to give two different grant rounds, but since we're we usually give a lot of money out in the spring for the same kind of event. Uh, so we have an, an ink that does our fundraising, Dana. Is that Dana asking? I just can't yeah. see it in my thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we have an, uh, an ink that does fundraising first night and stuff, and that has its own budget. Um, and to cover like small deficits, we can take some money and bring it over to, and I can deposit it into the the LCC account to cover the deficit here. So our deficit right now is 7,500 if we fund all the way to the ones. And I don't think we have that in our budget right now. I'm suggesting that we could we could give this money to the events and then we can fundraise. Um, I was gonna suggest we do a COVID artist relief fund as, as opposed to another events art instead of the RTZ this 2021, just because we're not out of COVID. Yeah. And, uh, so, and then we'll do another like GoFundMe campaign to help fundraise for that as well. And then we can take some of the money maybe that we fundraised from our events and put it towards this LCC thing and then just fund it like this. We can also go back and, and move things around. Um, Cause I'm not, do I want to give a check for 522.50 to somebody? No. <laughs> Right. Yeah, I think we need unless to we want to be formulaic and I'm, I'm totally into this formulaic thing I'm a clean numbers person it makes a lot of sense to me um, and I know what we're still not fundraising idea Brian um, what did you, you say I like your fundraising idea the additional fundraising idea yeah I so and, that. 
in normal times, we usually give out about, at our peak, we gave about $20,000 out in the fall. And then in the spring, we would give out $20,000 again, both are for events. Mm -hmm. um, and our new normal, or as, as it's called, last spring, we took $15,000 or $10,000, and then we fundraised about $33,000. And then we gave out to anybody who applied to us that has contributed to the culture in Northampton in the last three years. We just gave everybody the same amount check. That's what I want to do in this spring as well, because we're not selling tickets. People aren't selling work off the wall right now. So that's what I was going to suggest to the ink yeah. board and bring it up in the board meeting as well as our, our grant subcommittee. So I'm thinking that we can just think about shifting some of the funds from our events fundraising into covering some of the deficit in the LCC round. Do you have an idea about how much that might raise? I don't. Oh, uh, what the the COVID artist relief fund? Well, what what would uh, what we're talking about that would balance out this deficit? Uh, I think we could be comfortably, and I don't even looked at the numbers yet. I think we can comfortably give five thousand dollars from the Northampton Arts Inc. five one C three to cover whatever we have here, so we can just give out more money. Do we want to do a cap of like eight hundred dollars and? look at everything from there? Um, I think we should use this as a starting port or a formula and then go back and try to get us down to, you know, thinking about the more information from the applications and then adjust from, you know, actually like doing some critical thinking from the applicant and whatever conversation and to their expenses and to the request. I think we can do that and get to a point where the deficit's $5,000. I don't know if anybody wants to do that work right now, but we can do that right now. Um, and then I think the equity thing has been on our mind for a long time to, to reevaluate our, our priorities and to create a new scoring system. I think with Kent on the equity committee and his experience um, with the community foundation, we can have that in place by next fall um, easily, so. I moved to cut the Forbes Library, the third grant, to 450, which is half of what they requested as okay. a starting point. And I think I second. we could yeah. I think we could make a barometer that says if a project is high scoring but also has strong alternative sources of funding, 50% is a starting point. I second. That makes sure. sense, yes. Okay, so what do I do? I'm just gonna, I, we have a bunch of stuff up there. I feel like we got a lot of numbers, which is good. Just tell me where to go and I will move stuff around now. We gotta just cover a deficit of 24, 30, 50. By that logic, Vic would also be at 50%. Okay. Because they have other sources. And I, that pains me. And that is the logic I just presented. So. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> Vic has other funding sources in the way that like Forbes Library has other funding sources? He's gonna, um, it sounds like he's gonna apply for something Fair. that would cover travel expenses. He's gonna go down to Mexico. There. Hey. There you are, there are they. Hey. Um, thank you. I'm sorry, everybody. Just change, just stop apologizing and just gender them correctly <laughs> okay. and that's why i brought that up earlier it's like you're talking about how you're unbiased and you look at things but then misgendering no, people is that. a transphobic microaggression right oh, my. i'm not, actually not talking about i agree that i have some biases that have you know then stop you acting out on them in a public quite... city council subcommittee that yeah. is unprofessional to bring your transphobia to this meeting I think um, this is the kind of stuff we should have at the next meeting after we, you know, well, after you, got the equity committee and stuff is, you know, so I think, some stuff. It's I, just, I think it's important. It's distracting now, I think. Well, I, I do feel like- Because I you started it, Ellen, you're distracting people. When we presented Vic's 
when we presented VIX, three people had to jump on behind you to present for you because it was so distracting that you were misgendering them and that people had to correct you, that we had to make sure that the point got across because that is what happens when you misgender a trans person. With me being trans myself, I've dealt with that constantly. And yeah, I know that part of me being on this board is part of an equity thing. But if I don't say anything, then I just become a tokenization and not someone who's actually like, who, whose presence here is actually having an effect. If y'all are going to push it aside and continue to allow Ellen to continue to misgender people, especially people in this town, people who are a part of this town and care about this community. This is embarrassing and this is very insulting to them. I think, Ashlyn, thank you. And I wanna say like, I'm so glad you're here and value your presence and not because of equity reasons, because you bring so much and, and misgendering is a problem and it needs to be addressed. So I also think that we are all coming from, and, and it's unacceptable, right? It's unacceptable. And, um, I also think I can't have expectations unless I'm doing some teaching. And it's not, Ashlyn, it's not your job to teach. It's not your job to teach about gender. So one of the things Brian and I were gonna bring up in this meeting is that we are gonna be doing gender training. And I, I would love to involve our equity committee in the planning for what those trainings look like so that we all do have a shared understanding. So there is no confusion. So that there is no, like that, that they becomes a natural default um, and it isn't something that's hard for folks because I, I would like to create space for people to learn and grow. And I'm hopeful that people will learn and grow once we give them all the tools they need to do that. And I hear that it is, it is long overdue. It is something that should have happened long before any of us, <laughs> before I joined the board, before you joined the board. And I, I am willing to apologize that it didn't happen in the time that I have been here and it, it's gonna happen this spring. It's gonna happen within the next, I want to, I have, I'm thinking of folks who would be great trainers and trying to work with their schedule and make sure we can pay them. So I would like to say that it's gonna happen by within three meetings. Um, and if it could happen before then, I like hear the urgency it needs to happen before then. And I appreciate you. And it's, it's not fair that you have to like champion this in a meeting when you would like to be focusing on how much money to allocate to projects. Yeah, I'm, so, sure I'm sorry for that. Now. You're reminded over and over again. Sorry, we had to, uh, you had to put up with that. And uh, I'll be cognizant to try to inter, interject in, uh, and correct and be more uh, um, inclusive with language and in the, in the, in going forward. So um, I think we all need some help and uh, on being inclusive and using inclusive language. And we want to change subjects to back to the allocation. And I value your input and everybody else's. So I would like to look at maybe just evening out some of the numbers to even numbers. And like the parent center grant, I'd like to change from 1120 to like maybe 1100. Is that something Second. I, yeah. Second. Or, Um, and then, so I made up a little, it's a little bit of money and we already did that 450. Any other ideas? Um, Maybe the 1020 with level of, of, to a thousand right here. Second. Can, can, I think it's okay to do that with all of those, mm -hmm. those non, you know, yeah. uneven numbers. Okay. I'm going to be doing that right now. We'll do like, like 520, 250. Yeah, I fixed that. Yep. 
Uh, actually, we'll do yeah, 500. Um, can we um, continue the what? No, um, what Danielle had began with the reduction for funding source, like when there were funding sources, additional funding sources that were strong. I actually don't, I wasn't fully following the logic. I understood the one with Forbes, but I didn't understand the one with Vic. And it seemed a bit more like if we did that for Vic's application, we would, we may need to do that to quite a few other ones. Like I was okay. thinking projects that are happening and have significant other sources of funding. Okay. But I also, maybe maybe we can change it to like well, institutions that have significant sources of funding would be then at 50% if they're in top tier, which would remove Vic from that, um, that categorization. I think the institution um, aspect is, is probably more relevant uh okay um i know youth performance festival is happening this weekend and i think it's a northampton center for the arts but they need money so i don't know if we can you know they pay rent at the 33 holly and they fundraise for this program so i don't know where that puts in, but it's it's definitely supported by an institution that has uh, that has a long like longevity and support in our community, but it's, at this point they're funded at half at, at that. Do you want to look at the, the the biggest grants we're giving out and seeing if we can uh, readjust on those factors that Danielle was talking about? Well, rather than just jumping around, can we just go down in order? I think we had gotten to the okay. Rust pool that we hadn't talked about before we jumped into these uh, percentages. Rest Tempus, Temple School? Yeah. Vouter, 600 out of 1,000. Um, do you want Do you want to fund the 14 ones at 50% and as opposed to 60% or just that one in general? Well, I was just saying that I think we had talked about everything above there and I don't remember what the what the numbers were that we ended up at, but we haven't discussed anything from there below in terms of taking a look at, at what their, you know, uh, more subtle things about the um, applications are. Okay. Does anybody have any particular insights on any of the applications that, um, like the jazz festival, they're was, pretty well. Was it I would say they're well funded. I would yeah. say that they don't need as much funding from us. Is well, anybody second? Is that a sample of approval then? 250? Yeah, I thought you didn't want to give anybody less than 250. I just said 250. I think that yeah. works as the sponsorship that you mentioned earlier, Brian. It's been around for a while. Um, we, uh, does anybody, I, I say, is Jazz Festival a seal of approval? Do we give them 250? Is there a second or a third on that? Second. Third. Third, third. third okay. Objections, except for Kathy Service, can't object. <laughs> um, so, just look through and see if there's any place where we're feeling that they're, you know, right. youth performance festival. Do we want to give them 250? We funded them last year. They're supported. It's happening on Saturday. It's, it's going to happen whether we support it or not. And I don't know how they're going to give us any credit in their marketing because it's happening on Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, well, how's their funding? I mean, How's there other funding? Uh, and, I, I don't know. And side note on that, if that's the case, Brian, the same goes for Access Access, which has been happening this entire month. Yeah, I know. I'm just, again, yeah, you could say that for that. I wasn't going to bring that up because I don't have any insights on Access <laughs> Access, you know? I just saw the email from Northampton Center for the Arts this morning and just was like, oh, yeah. 
A, our logo is not on there, and B, it's happening, which is good. So again, I'm not suggesting. I'm just coming up with the ideas. This is what six ninety. Um, oh, no, I'm I'm agreeing with you as well. Just yeah, yeah. I think we can take Caribbean connection down. Does anybody? Um, uh, so, uh, is anybody on board with Rachel on that one? Maurice G. Lindsay, Lindsay Entertainment. Yes, yeah, only because we have to distribute the money a little bit more. So yeah. yes. How is that not? Oh, it's fifty-five percent. Is it supposed to be at fifty? No, oh, it's fifty. Fifty for thirty. Yeah, I think you missed a few at fifty. Oh, I did. So hold on. Yeah, so it's down a little bit. So we just gained a little bit of money, like 5%. All right, good. So it's down the half right now. And attack bear is down the half. Do you want to fund it less than $1,500, Rachel? I think, I mean, it's one of the larger grants and it's, um, I don't believe we've funded them before they have funding from the Springfield Cultural Council. It's a very long standing public access television program um, that I think will happen with or without our funding. So it does fall a little more into the, like the seal of approval territory. Um, the, the fact that we've never funded them before, I, I would negate, I would say that that would be a no, that it wouldn't be a seal of approval. It's like these are like long standing things like the jazz festival we funded multiple times I, i'm going to be in the park when it happens like setting up the back line and doing the sound system you know it's like a different kind of relationship i guess we, i i'm just mixing up my definition of that i thought it meant that like they fell into a high score and we believe in their program and you know want to it's a little bit of both but i would like to have I don't, like i'd like to fund something we've never we've never funded it before so i think giving them money to have a different culture brought to Northampton is like a worthwhile endeavor. Um, I so, that. I um, agree. Yeah, especially with like the pre the Jamaican presence in like a city that's close, like Springfield. Yeah. So yeah. I also was not suggesting we went to two fifty. I was just suggesting. Oh, that that's what I thought you were suggesting. Oh no, no, I was like, just like we want to give them money but we acknowledge that their program is going to happen with or without our money therefore it's a it's a grant where we could potentially give them less yeah but it, the other stipulation is that we funded them before that would be a, another thing you can add into that like kind of and this, again this is a more it is not a rule it's something that is the board has done in the past like I always use the like you know Pioneer Valley uh, ballet for Nutcracker is like the the quintessential thing or like jazz festival would be there. It's been around for a while. It, it, it could use the money because they do really good stuff, but I think they'll be okay. And we also support it in other ways um, with venue and then also like volunteer staff and things. Um, do you think yeah. you could do a stamp of approval for uh, seminars? I, yeah, we could because they are really well funded and 53rd anniversary. Yep. So 250 for them. Second. Um, but I, looking at things like a equity inclusion and also first time grantees to me is like equity inclusion. Like I like to give money to people who never got money from us before. Yeah. yeah. It, it is a uh, high number. And I, for whatever reason, I'm wondering if a thousand dollars would work. I know that that puts it at 30%. Does that right. feel too low? That's the Are number saying, I had in mind. Are you saying for the Caribbean connection? Yeah, sorry. I was wondering if we wanted to drop both Caribbean connection and attack bear by 250. So that would be 500 total uh, spread across both of them. I'm going to go one more and say we give a thousand to each of them. Okay. I want to fund them, but they're, yeah. Well, maybe not. Maybe the 250. <laughs> Let's go with the 250. I, I think both of them are really worthwhile, worthwhile uh, grants. So drop each of one of these by two fifty. You said. Does any pr protest against this? No. Okay. 
Is there anything else at the top that we can work with? Those are just, um, we just like those because they were big ones. There's a 1200 right here for Bridge Song series for Diana Alvarez. Um, Diana, we can, um, but that's 2000 number $3,200 budget. That's good. It's, Ryan, I, I, I would, I would, I would reduce Caribbean Connection to a thousand dollars as well because I think as has been pointed out, both of those are likely to occur. Both the Caribbean Connection and the Tack Bear Press are likely to, to happen in any case. And we're, that's a substantial amount of money, $1,000 to give them. Yeah. And, I, and I would also um, say that, especially in light of the fact that the youth performance is happening anyway, I think uh, reducing that to 250 is also reasonable. Because like you said, they're not going to be able to, to credit us in their program unless you know how they're going I can to send an email or do an op-ed after in the gazette which would be fine uh -huh. they're, like there because there there is ways to do it um does does anybody second our third freeman's uh ideas i second freeman's idea so a thousand on caribbean connection and then 250 on youth performance festival should i do that we've got a third on that yeah i third okay I'm, uh, I'm also inclined to increase the funding on our top grant. It's such a small ask. Same. I second. I want to just fully fund them or clo as close to fully as we can. Mm -hmm. I, is, third, so I second fully funding. Uh, me too. Me too. The top, the top grant? Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. The top one. 500 for the top one? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Right. Okay. Good. Fine. I'm totally fine with that. And then this one. So 776. That's all we gotta find. What about what about the uh SCDT interdisciplinary video series? Is that something that's going to be happening no matter what? Where are we at? Yes. Yes, that it's something that's happening no matter what. So what do you guys want to do with that one? It's 720. 500? Yes. Five, uh 450. 450? You're, you're on the access access right now. It's oh, which one? Oh, that one other. Okay, 450. 450 for that. And do we want to do 500 for the access access? I would, I would say 300. It's another program that's already happening. We know it's already happening. People, people it's nice to pay sources. people. Yeah. yeah. How about 500? Okay, it's five is fine. 500. Uh, and then we got, there's $406. Um, the two $800 ones in that bottom yeah. area, or I guess there are three. Can we talk about those and see if- Performance if project, I think we should fund them. That's important, first generation stuff, but we can talk about plague. What is this one? Plague wedding, Abigail Weaver. That's a new play, new artist in the community, uh, but is a white woman. Yeah. 750? I mean, project, but it won't break my heart. 750, 500? 500? Second and third? Yes, second. 500. That's three people. Just let me know if there's any pr pr uh, protests. 690, I want to change to 650 just because our 700. Well, six, a social cut, 650. Yeah, 650. What about right. moving water, the bottom one? Uh, moving water, uh, serious play, um, 750. Which, or, which one was this again? Was serious this, play, theory, moving water. Was this where they were walking around to the Cultural Images Group, Inc.? Uh, they have an ongoing um, mu moving water thing they've been doing over the last couple of years. Exactly. Some, um, actors and writers, um, they always need money. <laughs> no, they, they always need money. It's ongoing. You can lessen that. So uh, what, do you, what do you think? I, if we do seven, 
700 will be good and will be in deficit around five thousand dollars unless we want to move money up what i noticed um sorry i'm not really allowed to talk but i noticed the plan you're allowed to talk it's a public meeting. I'm not really allowed to like vote. You can't have... vote. You can't vote, but yeah. you can influence anybody you want with your thoughts. It's great. I'm going to influence around the planters because I thought earlier when you were talking about that, we felt like they would be okay without those. And that's a, it looks like they're getting a thousand right now Thank from you. us. So I wonder that's if a, a few yeah. hundred from that could get moved elsewhere. I would. Yeah. Thank you, Dana. I would knock that down significantly. Where is that? Like significantly, like 250 maybe. Oh, right here. Uh, because they are a part of our, they're part of the community. They're a longstanding thing. Right. It's planters. While it's nice to have as a visual, it's not directly impacting BIPOC, no. BIPOC peoples. And <laughs> also, they can put out a call and get that money ASAP. I we, mean, have a, we have a ghost on here. Oh. What was that? We have a ghost. No, we have somebody uh Lil on is on. Oh, Lil's on the uh, on the chat. Okay. Um so thanks for joining us, Lil. And uh Northampton Community Arts Trust. Um so you guys want to give them 250 like a seal of approval? Yeah. Yes. Okay. They are paying other artists to do it, but they should pay for artists because artists. Yeah. All right. So we're good now. So if I want everybody to, to look at what we got going on here. And if there's anything that we're really, we want to change, let me know. Um, if there's any protests or there any other grants we want to really look at to see if we can get money down to the other grants or just pick uh, I would still question the 800 for moving water. Um, okay. Let me drop that down a little bit. What do you think? 500? That's my first inclination, but I don't, I don't really know that much. Second and third. Serious Play has been around for a long time. They do really good work. They, they work with a lot of local people. I don't know how inclusive they are. Um, and They're not they're... that inclusive, but they have been around. They do do good work. Maybe something. They're... 250, 500, 750, any other? 500. 500. 500, okay, we have 500. All right, so then we got almost like $900 to go down a little bit. Is, is there anything down here that we want to fund? Any of these, these three, do you want to give them a little bit of money? No, <laughs> I think stick with no. your If we're okay. already like down the hole by 4,000, don't go any below the 12. Okay. Exactly. Okay. I just want to give everybody money. <laughs> right. Get better at fundraising. Oh, then we start really having to redo all this again. Yeah, right? I know. I know. So it's What's... good. We'll save some money for the artist, the COVID artist relief. Um, so, so Jesse, Kent, Rachel, Freeman, Lori, Danielle, Ashlyn. I'm just looking at how my my grid is is on um, on Zoom right now, a and Eamon and Michael. Are these numbers good? And if they are, so we make a motion to move to to uh, fund to to vote on this allocation. We can have discussion right now, a little bit more discussion. If there's anything that we want to fund or move around. Um, Ryan, can you go down a little bit more on yeah. the on the sheet? I just have one just question. Call. There's there's a line item for June. Thank you. We are all musicians. Um, I don't know anything about that one. Is that is that someone that we want to think about giving some money to? I'm just assuming because it's Juneteenth. It's a um, something about Juneteenth, and I don't know who's producing it. Jeanette yeah, Rosima. I, I think that was the all white women's. It was. That's yeah. right. All oh, white yeah. women's too. That's yeah. right. With I remember that quite maybe. well. Yeah. <laughs> um, which I, I think means that. Oh, Rachel, go ahead. Oh, I. I also. This has come up before. Um, when there's grants that are like several down from the last one we funded, and there's a desire to to fund them for whatever the reason may be that we we 
can't do it without funding the ones above them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it brings me to yeah. wanting to talk about the mystery of the missing music, which was fantastic in my view. Um, and oriented to kids, which there isn't much of. So, but, but you're right, that is a balancing act. Um, I mean, Lori, I can bring up the same point. Lori, I can bring up the same point around the um, bringing back dance. Um, I'm forgetting the name of it right now, but the one put on by Noel St. John that would use the Academy as a fundraiser for dance in the Northampton community. Uh -huh. and making sure dance is alive. Um, it's not being funded right now. I wish it could be, but honestly, there all these other ones are so much I, more fulfilling. Well, who is it fulfilling to is the question. But you know what, Michael, you're almost inaudible, at least for me. Something happened to the sound. Is that the case for everyone else? Yeah, he doesn't have great yeah. sound right now. I think that okay. he's probably, his, right. his, his connection's probably not as good. Okay. Uh, can you hear me now? It's not really different. I can hear you. It's I can hear you. You're, you're fine. It's a little tinny. I'm looking at all the pro. I'm just going through all the projects now, and is everybody yeah. feeling good about it? Yeah, I think we should stick to the twelve and above rather than making special cases below. Okay. And then we're gonna take. I'm gonna take four thousand thirty-six out of the ink budget and deposit it so we can cover these grants. Um, and then uh, to address some of the conversations around how we interact with our grant applicants. So I do send a rejection letter out and then I do offer, um, I usually act as like the person who receives the um, emails back from people. They wanna know why they were rejected and I usually, end up CCing the board member who was the presenter for that particular category in that grant. And then I, I want that board member to take responsibility to discuss how to improve that particular rejected applicants um, application for the next grant round. Cool. Um, and also give them ideas. If you have a, a background of being an artist and how to get other, you know, different sources of income and just be encouraging in general. So that's uh, normally what happens. Uh, we do offer workshops. Um, normally they're in person this year. We did a um, webinar that is actually up for forever on Facebook and there's a link directly in our grant sites. Um, uh, I, I definitely talk and have meetings with a lot of different applicants and spend time um, trying to cultivate applications with applicants as much as everybody else here does as well. So, um, but we, there is more work and it'd be nice to, to, to just get more people, but I, in the end, I, I want to just like, people have to take responsibility if they really wanted to, to do their project. So I feel like we, we could do more things, but I definitely think if there's there's genuine people are very uh, want to get information. We I think we're making a decent effort to be available and to be interactive and provide that for them. Um, but going back to where we're at, we're at the allocation. Um, if there's any not any more discussion, I'd ask one of the um, municipal slash LCC board members to. Um, make a motion to approve the allocation as we're all looking at it. And then I need a second and then we need a vote. Um, so. So moved. Yes. Second. Second. Okay. Can I, all in favor? Aye. Can Aye. I see some, some hands? Aye. All right. We got Aye. hands. Anybody's abstaining? Nope. Any nays? Nope. All right. We have a unanimous. Uh, so. This is locked in. I will um, thank you everybody for the really insightful and good discussion. It is a messy process that we can, uh, again, we can go for a codification if we want and put it in cement um, and really like have a way we do it. Uh, but then it wouldn't be such interesting meetings as we have now. But I, <laughs> I, like, I like how we did it this time with the percentages because I like math and it makes it makes it feel clean and i look forward to 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 changing our priorities and our scoring system 
um, for next uh, fall so we can have um, an equity score. And, uh, and I know I would love to hear what you have to say, Kent, about that process and how we can incorporate that. Oh, um, I'm happy to, to, to work with you on that. Work with you. Yeah, it's going to be great. Uh, so I just need another board member to um, motion to close the grant allocation portion of the meeting and we can move on to um, committee updates. Move to close. Seconded. Yeah. Seconded. Second. All in favor? Yep. Any abstentions or nays? Nope. Moving on. Thank you, everybody. Hey, uh, Kathy Service, do we have meeting minutes from last? From last meeting? Did we have on January 22nd, 12th, did we have minutes or were, were you here or was somebody else here? mute because i didn't send the minutes around we're gonna have to table the minutes i think we had a, we might have not ha did we not have a a quorum all right oh. are you ready i'm i've been looking in online and i haven't I, i'm here now I, uh, but i uh, i the reason i i'm i put you on mute and i i was looking at the screen to see but you just have the same thing up so the screen hasn't changed oh i'm sorry i'll turn that off right now is that better? Yes. Okay. okay. So did we have a quorum and did we have meeting minutes? The meeting minutes from last month, there was no meeting in, in um, January. We had the, the allocation. The last one was in December. Okay, good. So I was just not paying it. Like, I think it's I was okay. aware. I had to look, I looked myself, so not to worry. Okay, great. And we already approved those last minutes. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to go through the, the, I, just, I have a qu couple questions just before, sure. um, cause I missed a few things. So just bear with me. Let me just get what I started to type up the minutes. So, um, uh, Jesse, are you officially on the board now? Yes. Great. Yes. Okay. Okay. Great. And then Tulani and, and Dana, we're still waiting. Yep. Yep. Okay, good. That's all. Okay. And, um, and that, um, George is not coming. He regrets, and also Esther regrets. Uh, Esther's regrets. She's still on maternity leave. And what was the other one? George. George is uh, regrets too. Yes. Okay. 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 Great. That's all. Thanks. Okay. So all right. Can we there. start with? Um, um, I'm sorry, the Northampton Ham Abolition Now. We have a nope. You take over, Danielle, oh, chairperson. Oh, I want to pass it to either Lil or Jesse. Who yeah, I have a question. Who's Lil? I don't, there's new people here. So I just didn't, I just saw there's somebody new. Lil is uh, a member of the public who is joining oh, uh, okay. us as a, okay. as a public yeah, viewer from I, what I understand. Hi, I, and I, your last name, I need to have that too for the minutes. Uh, I think the initial is okay, Kathy. Okay. That's Lil has great. My full like, name is Liliana Pollard. Okay. Well, I just, I, I don't know what to put for the minutes. That's all I'm just saying in terms of official minutes. That's it. That's cool. I don't really care. Jesse, do you um, want to speak to this or do you want me? I can take it, but if others would like to introduce it, I'm happy for that. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to. Um, <clears throat> I was just going to pull up the letter. Um, <clears throat> great. So, by, by way of introduction, as Jesse pulls the document up for people to read, I will say that there is um, a movement in Northampton that is really focused on making sure city funds are going to social services. So that includes the arts, that includes healthcare, that includes mental health, that includes social work. And the primary method of getting those funds to those causes is one that is based in abolition. That means defunding police, that means taking funds from sources that are more carceral and, and tend to actually have the biggest budgets, right? So, so this proposal is I think a community action around, around that issue, which I think we would all 
benefit from directly as a board. And, and Jesse can definitely share it more. Great, yeah, thank you so much for that. Uh, Lil's gonna speak too. Oh, I'm gonna take a pass and speak. Okay, yeah, Lil's gonna speak on it too. Uh, thorough introduction there. I just put in the link that, I don't know if it'll work for everyone because that's from my email or not, but everyone should have gotten this uh, letter via the uh, agenda meeting email. Um, and I don't know if I should just go ahead and, and read it out loud, Danielle, or some, do a summary. Did everybody read it? You can just summarize that. I can't have access to it for some reason. Uh, I'll, I'll, put a, I'll put a copy in right into the chat right now. How about that? Perfect. Thank you, Brian. Um, so uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm just going to move forward with reading it if that's good. OK. Um, so this is from Northampton Abolition Now. We recently released our demands for the Northampton Mayor and City Council, and we would love your support in helping get Northampton on a solid path towards reimagining public safety and transforming the city budget to reflect the values Northampton professes to hold. We would, of course, love for the Arts Council to sign on to the demands, and there's a link there. Um, and below are some other ways we could use the Arts Council's support and would be excited to collaborate around Individuals within the Arts Council sign on to the demands as individuals. The Arts Council co-sponsors with NAN an abolition-themed interactive community art project. We have a number of ideas in the works. Uh, there is a compilation of abolition-themed community arts projects and ideas at a link there. The Arts Council hosts its own abolition-themed community Creative projects calls for participation from Northampton individuals or organizations to respond to a prompt or come up with their own abolitionist art creation or host their own community safety slash abolition educational event or dialogue. Um, ideas for abolition themed art uh, for Northampton could look like community safety looks like and then have people fill that in what would you do with $16,522 a day for your community, which represents the amount that Northampton spends on yeah. police per day? Themes of punishment slash policing, transforming and metamorphosing into the world that we wanna live in, opening up interactive conversation dialogue in some medium around harm versus crime slash criminalization versus community safety and care. The Arts Council hosts or encourages any educational events, community conversations around abolition in any format. And some ideas for formats uh, includes a short list here, digital submissions, displays in storefront windows, printed materials, performance oriented video or fiber arts. Um, NAN is very flexible and we would be excited to support any projects that help people understand that abolition is about creating the beautiful world we want to live in starting now by one, defunding a violent police force and other coercive institu institutions and investing into community needs and community-led care, two, supporting mutual aid work, strengthening other existing community-led supports programs and finding new ways to care and support one another outside of state invest intervention beginning now. Our hope from the Arts Council is that you too might be excited about helping change the culture in Northampton in order to help deepen people's analysis of policing and abolition and also help broaden people's imaginations about what is possible to demand and make a reality. We're also particularly interested in project ideas and initiatives that engage as many community members as possible and or peoples and groups viewed as leaders and influential in some way in the community and or communities who are not very supported or represented in Northampton government and or a wide array of Northampton groups. One way to do that would be to start a project which asks community members to engage other community members and so on. For example, in the way that a bolathon invites individuals to gather their own team of people who will participate and each member of the team ends up outreaching to their personal networks. We're also open to supporting the Arts Council in such a project in whatever ways the Arts Council would like. Uh, thank you. So <clears throat> this basically, I see this letter requesting two things. Um, one, and, and this is the more immediate thing that I think uh, I would like to see us 
um, at least do an initial vote and conversation around is whether or not to sign on to the demands, um, which are very simple. They are three demands which read, I'm reading from their website now, which is northamptonabolitionnow.com. I will put that in the chat. Um, three demands are immediately reallocate the full $880,000 that was cut from the police budget in June, 2020 to meet the urgent needs of community members in the fiscal year 2021. Two, establish a new department of community care um, that will be responsible for reimagining and implementing true public safety in Northampton. By May of 2021, this new department must be accountable to communities in Northampton who are most impacted by criminalization and policing. Money cut from the Northampton Police Department's proposed fiscal year 2022 budget shall be used to fund the Department of Community Care. And finally, three, defund the Northampton Police Department by 50% and reallocates these funds for the fiscal year 2022. And then the other points in the letter, I think are all well worthwhile to continue to discuss and talk about as we move forward. Um, but I would like to kind of table those things until another meeting um, since we are kind of running short on time this evening. And so, Jesse, there is an option for us to all individually sign on. There is an option for, yes, everyone as individuals can sign on. Um, and I've already done that. I'll help myself. I'm, I'm on. <laughs> Thanks, Ken. So have I. Um, there are, uh, there is a kind of a reason behind asking the Arts Council to sign on as a uh, government council. Um, there have been other uh, councils and other states and cities that have done such a thing, but no other council in Northampton has yet to sign on. I know a conversation with the youth council is in the works, um, but it would go a long way in um, strengthening the ideas behind community support and uh, re, um, you know, reallocating the funds um, to something that would be uh, helping the community rather than um, laying fallow. And I will also just scaffold on to that. There are some folks who have not made their mind up before this whole thing goes forward. And it might go a long way towards swaying those few folks who are still on the fence, yay or nay, when they see an arts org such as the Arts Council get behind something like this. So I think that's important. Brian, do does the board have the ability to do this in a way that doesn't impact you? I don't think so. I, I can't be part of it because I work for the city. Right. Um, but I, 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 I think the board can do it. I, and it's whether it impacts me or not, I, I just can't sign it just because I work for the city. Um, Is but there the, any way that this could impact you? Sure, but it, I but you guys decide whether you want to do it or not. This doesn't have anything to do with me. But uh, uh, but like my name and my like identities is inextricably linked with the Arts Council, which means so many things to many people. Right, but, but like I, I'm happy it, to sign it as like a board chair, and I'm happy to like write something as a board chair and have people sign. But I don't know if. My, my only concern is that Northampton Arts Council as a board, like- I'm not on the board though. Right, so, so we could do something as a board, but not as the council. Yeah, you, you could do it as the board, you could do it as the Northampton, like the, the yeah. board of the Northampton right. Arts okay. Council and then everybody signs it and yeah. that's the way you would do it. You yeah, know, and, and I think there should be a discussion that, that everybody that's on the board, go ahead, Kathy. Just, just so you know, in terms of this, we're not a board, it's a council. The Arts Council is a council. It's not going to be a board in the city. The Inc. is a board. So that was just so in terms of um, tech, you know, from, from being on the city and, you know, having okay. went round and round with the Council on Aging, we were really reprimanded that we weren't, we aren't a board, we we're a council. So we're a council, okay. Council. So we, as the municipal is a council, the Inc. is a board. So just got it. Thanks, Kathy. I think. Thanks, Kathy. So 
I, I, I want us to support to the maximum that we can. And I want, I just want to make sure that in saying that I'm not putting three very dear colleagues jobs at risk in any way. Yeah. And as long as we are saying that board members are do maybe this is not maybe Kathy is making it difficult. Well, just, I mean uh, council members, council members. Council members. members. Perfect. Yeah. Council members. I just want to be very specific in our language so that if like if everyone agrees, we mm -hmm. do this as volunteers who are part of this agency where we are all mayoral appointees, mm -hmm. but we are not paid by the city. So I just want to make sure that th there's no I don't want to I don't want to do something that could inadvertently yeah. hurt. Brian or Pete or, oh, or so as long as you tell me like oh that's unlikely to happen that's my only concern yeah. I don't have any other content concern. how would it hurt him you think like can I ask that well I don't know because well we're getting a new mayor right so it, it is kind of a clean slate this budget is gonna be well the, the, the new mayor is not gonna do the budget okay no, we're doing the FY22 budget right now yes yeah, so I I'd just like to jump in Danielle, I'd like to jump in because I think it's premature. It's certainly premature for me. It's interesting that this has come up at this meeting because I recently subscribed to the shoestring um, and uh, made my monthly donation to that. And in the shoestring, just recently, they they also published this let this uh, statement from Nan and. Um, and I really, and I looked carefully earlier today at the demands that were being made. And I don't feel comfortable with all of the demands right now. N not because I necessarily disagree uh, with the potential outcome. I just don't know that it's been fully examined. And in particularly, I'm talking about cutting the police 50%. You know, that seems- that, that seems like that, that might make sense. And I certainly would love to see a number of changes in the police department being made, but I would like to have a lot more discussion about that, a lot more information about that put on the table um, and, and what that would really look like. And I'm speaking not only um, as an old white guy, but for somebody who has talked to a lot of people who are in social services and about how they rely on the police in certain instances as well. And I wanna understand, fully understand the implications of those things. On the other hand, I am completely on board with doing everything that we can to, to have programs, to have initiatives, to support the, the, the focus, the priority, that the desired outcome of that. So from my perspective, I don't feel like I can sign on to that. I, I'm not in, I don't understand clearly enough the implications, nor do I understand whether the research has really been done to understand whether 50% is just a completely arbitrary number or it's based in anything that's any facts. I, I, would, uh, I would like to say I that I think then that what Danielle proposed is that we sign on as individual members of the Arts Council, thereby freeing you not to sign if you don't wish to, thereby allowing us that wish to and put our support behind it to do so. And then that way, no one's forced to do anything or put in a bad light. Lori was like saying something first, Jesse. Go ahead, Lori. I'm sorry. Thank you. I would like to say, Kent, that I, I think that's right. What you said is makes all the sense in the world. And I would like to say emphatically that the term defund is a tragic mistake. It should be restructure or something that means restructure. The term defund the police department, it, it, it has such a negative destructive connotation and wow. I'm so sorry that term was used. Danielle, you're shaking your head no. You don't agree with me and that's fine. Well, Lori, I'm, so I know Jesse, do you wanna jump in, Jesse? Well, I, yeah, before, before we get into this, cause I know this could, this could go off on a, on a, long, a long thing. I just wanna take a step back and ask procedurally, if we were to take a vote on this, how, what would it be? Would it have to be unanimous? Would it have to be three, you know, a supermajority? 
or did it have to be it's just Robert's rules of order? It's Robert's rules of order. And it's, I, I'm not as well educated on like how a council, the, the council can do this, but I, I'm sure it's fine. We'll see. There'll, there'll, there'll be blowback, I'm sure, from, you know, I work with different city apartments and I'm sure I'm going to hear things about it. And, you know, as an individual, I support um, most of the demands here, but I wouldn't um, have my myself as an ind like a employee of the city sign this just because of the conflict that it might arise. Right, Brian, but I'm asking like, if we all took a vote right now. It's Robert's rules, so it's majority, Jesse. Okay. Um, thank you, thank yeah, you yeah, for sorry. that. Um, I, I think that, uh, I'll throw it back to Danielle since you obviously had something that you wanted to say about defund. Well, I, I don't think that we should debate um, the content, right? We were, pro we, someone was made a proposal and I'll name that I also signed. And before I joined this meeting at seven, at six, I spoke on the Northampton Police Review Commission um, citing research as to why trainings don't work, as to why defunding is actually a very research-based method for um, for community well-being, right? And like Lori, the term defund is coming from a culture of protest and a history of violence that was caused by police. So when we say defund, we're saying it in the words of protesters who have been making that call, activists who have been making that call for generation generations. The way I introduced it to you actually was different, right? I didn't actually use the term defund at first, but it's the focus here is community wellness, like community betterment, community well-being. And the method is one that is a reallocation of resources from an organization that has a history of harm and violence to places that actually have histories that are founded with the intention of undoing harm and violence and preventing harm and violence. We know that the police were founded as like slave patrol. We know that there's a really deep harmful life there. So um, I, I would like to propose, and Jesse, would it be helpful for the board to write a letter of support in which we couch which I don't want to couch, I don't want to say like some demands we support, some don't, but a letter of support for the mission, the vision, and the role of the arts in supporting the mission, or is that something that, and then could like go on the website, is that something that would still be helpful, or does that feel too watered down? Um, I think, I think anything and everything will be helpful. Um, I think that the biggest impact would be if we signed on as, um, as the Arts Council, um, especially before the police commission uh, gives their final um, uh, information out in March. Um, I think that in lieu of an agreement to do that, um, a letter would definitely be a wonderful way of, would be a really great like secondary, um, secondary show of, uh, support for the ideas behind it. Um, and as, as they said in the letter, any, any information and any interaction um, is welcome. So if um, a communication with them is preferred before we even uh, sign a letter or if a conversation needs to happen um, that I'm sure can be arranged before anything moves forward. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. I, I still return to the concept of those of us that choose to support, do it as board members, those of us that have written in to support, I fully support it. And, you know, I do workshops around policing and stuff, but I also want to make sure that someone doesn't feel push to do this that doesn't buy into it 100 percent because that's not the name of the game either so freeman's uh hesitancy i want to respect that and have him support it as much as he can based on the ways that he does so that that's pretty much what we're i mean why are we going to use heavy-handed tactics when we're dealing with with 
a culture that we're trying to undo. So I don't want to act in a way that is based in the same thing that we're trying to, to, to eradicate. Right, and that's why I was saying, I think like a conversation with um, some NAN members might be, might be helpful to get some of those questions answered directly. Yeah, because like one thing, this isn't new, as like this happened when the defund happened over the summer, it was originally 50% that they were proposing and they got underhanded by city council 10% and then created the police review commission which has delayed this process and now the police commission has already been working on other alternatives i don't know if if y'all attend this but I, I get texts from a lot of those groups and so basically it still has to clear the the, the you know i mean so to me whatever mm -hmm. support we can give these situations is important i would also oh rachel go ahead yeah, I, I know I'm I'm probably just stating the obvious, um, but I, I'm definitely in full support of everyone signing on as individuals, and I think that's a great way to, to move forward, but I'm just kind of want to reiterate what Jesse began with, which is that there is a certain um, weight that comes from being a, a body <clears throat> such as ours in a town, being a council that is going to sign off on something like this, and it's the way in which change gets made in those incremental ways that it takes. And it's a very significant move that we could make as a council. I am in, a, I am in agreement with Kent too that we shouldn't do it if we're not all on board. Um, uh, and for that, for that, I, wonder if we can use the polling feature of Zoom. I'm not sure if we have that feature here, but like basically if we're not 100% on board now, I would I would like to see us like poll each meeting and, and at the moment when we are, if that moment comes that we not lose sight of the fact that as a council, we, um, you know, we can make a really significant uh, move. Here, here. I agree with Rachel. Like yeah. what we do as a whole and putting our whole name on it as a whole is going to have much more of an impact. And especially in these things with organizing, it's going to have a huge impact. And then also with what you were concerned about, uh, Winfrey and Lori, is that um, there are other things that are being brought up and that are being um, taken that are that are in movement right now for alternatives there's there's alternatives that have social workers respond to things because to be honest for someone who's dealt with like been in positions of domestic violence and stuff cops are not who show up for that and when they do it's so much worse it mm -hmm. is so much worse for minorities it's i mean for marginalized people it's and um and there are the reason they're talking about uh, defunding that is to put it towards these kind of systems which are already being brought up. So these, so there are. It, it's not just an open-ended thing. Like people are actively working on it, and pol the police commission is working to find alternatives, and they are on the floor right now. Yeah, I'm aware of I'm aware of some of those initiatives as well, and I am completely on board with a letter of of support for the mission and the vision. I don't have any problem with that whatsoever. I fully endorse that. And I would have no problem with the councils uh, making such a statement either. Um, the demands are something that I'm not, I don't feel prepared or comfortable signing on to. Um, I mean, you know, there are so many things that I think the Arts Council can do to you know, and, and I think Ken <clears throat> has spoken to that and, and Danielle has in terms of just our own behavior in terms of how we communicate with the larger community and, and, and how we invite people in and, and how we support everybody's voice. Um, and I would love to see us pursue those things. And I would love to see the services that are now being provided by the police <clears throat> being provided by more appropriate people myself. Absolutely. I have no problem with that. And I would love to not have police carrying guns. I don't understand 
why that's not a high priority. Well, that's where defunding so, comes from. But 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 um, but I'm not the, the demands doesn't doesn't feel comfortable for me. I, I would like I to say to Danielle, thank you for explaining the history of the term defund. And I'm being sarcastic because I'm kind of upset that you said it to me that way. I'm not an idiot, and I read. And I really didn't like the way you presented that to me. I still go on go on record as objecting to that terminology. I am a child of the '60s. I was all around for the protests, so I just I just want to be heard. Thank you very much. Or I I apologize for the way I explained. It. I really did not mean to offend you. It was something that I only learned as part of protest culture in the last couple of years. I did not know. And my first instinct also was from a marketing standpoint, is that the right terminology? And it was only after I forced myself to say, cause you know, people don't know I work in marketing and communications. I was like, is that the right brand? And I asked myself that and I said, well, isn't that a little bit of like embedded white supremacy of me to kind of question that? That, that was my own growth process that I went through in the past year. So this was new for me. I really did not mean it as any kind of attack on well, you. Thanks for it was really I appreciate I'm that. I'm, I'm, I'm very much oriented to language and I am still in the eye of the public, whatever the purpose is, and it's a wonderful purpose. We have to be behind it as individually, as much as we can with whatever objections we have to some of the details. I still object to the term. So thanks for, think, thanks for explaining. I don't think we need to belabor it. I think terminology is something that is set by a greater number of people than even is in Northampton. Um, defund has been on the demands of the movement for black lives um, since mm -hmm. 2014. It's been something that's been in the general mm -hmm. consciousness. Um, I don't think that word is going to really change. Um, I'm not expecting it to change at all. I'm just, I'm just stating a personal objection. I'm not debating the existence of it. I'm just saying I don't think it's useful. But I guess okay, I guess that's I'm, me. Yeah, I no, no, I totally, I, I hear you on that. I guess I'm just asking. Um, I'm wondering if the use of the word defund is putting you in a place of not wanting to sign on to it just because of the use of the word or if you're just stating that you don't like the word and you're willing the to- The latter is it. true. The latter is true, definitely. Uh, I, I think I that's kind of- Oh, just, go ahead. Uh, um, just, Jesse, you're presenting this tonight. Are you asking for us to decide tonight whether we- not, I'm not demanding a vote um, tonight. I think that uh, I totally hear what Kent and Rachel say in terms of um, getting to a place where everyone is comfortable. And I don't feel like everyone, I, what I'm, from what I'm hearing, I don't feel like everyone is comfortable. Yeah, right I wanna research head. it a little bit and read it by myself. And yeah. Yeah, so I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't demand a vote. You know, that's not something that I wanna do. And I would like to offer um, any sort of, um, you know, connection with people at NAN uh, to come here and have a conversation if that's what people want to move forward with before a vote happens, I think that that would, could be a very effective, um, effective way of, of kind of taking a step towards this. I think that could also inform, I'm, I'm also happy to draft a letter of support and circulate it to the group, he, like hearing some of the comments, right? So that, that we can get something quickly, or if we would like to invite Nan to one of our meetings to do a presentation, Mm -hmm. and ask questions, Jesse, if you think that that would be work. I think that could be a great first step. And then we could use that meeting to either take, take a vote or to sign as a council or to write a, a little bit more thorough of a letter. I think if you would be willing to write a letter um, kind of stating where, where it seems like we are and if, we're all, if we all sign on to that, um, then we can send that to Nan and take that as a starting point so that we can have a fuller discussion uh, from, from a place of understanding where we all are rather than um, rehashing some of the things that we've already said this evening or if we need to. Does that mean there's no time pressure? I, 
I mean, I, I would like to, I would like to, if we're going to move forward in this way, in terms of doing a letter, getting that to Nan, getting Nan to come here to talk to us, I would like to do that as quickly as possible. By the next, next meeting? Yeah, at our next meeting. Sure. Um, you know, so that's what, that's a month? That's good. A month, right? I like that. For the final reports due March 18th, yes? So we have that's what I have in my notes. Yeah, I think that's correct. Yeah, and so it would be nice because there are those that are convinced one side or the other. There are those people that sit in the middle. I think that's where we can sway folks if that is one of the things I want to do. I mean, I figure some people there are no. I look at what's happening in East Hampton and there are blowbacks against this. So I think it's important to really look at that and why those blowbacks exist. So I'm for writing the letter and for inviting someone from NAN to come talk about, you know, yeah, good idea. To, 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 to lay out as much information as possible for folks that need it. I mean, speaking as one of the few folks from a marginalized community here, I could go on and on and on, and I'm keeping quiet because I'm. I, it's nice to hear other people taking up the slack here. But um, you know, uh, I'm. I, I could go off on this. I live in Northampton. I've been in the Valley a long time. I can't begin to tell you the stories of all of this, and I'm normal looking, quote unquote. You know, with academic stickers on my car. So you know. Anyway, yes, invite Nan. Yes, we should do what we can to support it, period. Yes, Jesse, if we invite Nan to our next meeting and do an hour, half hour, an hour with them, maybe 45 minute presentation, 15 Q and A or something like that, a half hour presentation, 15 Q and A, however they wanna structure it. Does that give us enough time to, okay, I could like turn a letter around in a day circulate it to people, give them a few days to edit and sign. Does that give us enough time to put it in front of the people who need to see it before March 18th? Um, well, what's the, uh, so what's the date of our next meeting? March, March, is the 9th. Goal, March 9th. And is the goal also for people to see it before making the recommendation or is it like, just trying um, to figure out how to be most effective? I think a lot of it's a it's a rolling target to be honest. Um, I think a lot of what can get done, uh, you know, before the police commission finalizes their report, um, can go to uh, kind of give a little bit of support to um, the people that are in the police commission, knowing that there are other organizations in um, the government that, uh, that are making their voices known that they're being supportive. Um, I think that perhaps a letter, you know, if you're able to write a letter and we can all kind of read it over and give our thumbs up on it by the end of this week um, and get that out there to Nan then that they can use as a letter of support for the, the things that we, um, you know, in a general sense of support, that will definitely go towards helping on the short term. I think the biggest thing is just a whole long term goal moving towards the, um, the budget, the 2022 budget. So anything that can get done sooner is great half, you know, a month and a half from now is great. A month from now would be amazing. Like if we had Nan come in and have that conversation. And at the end of that, we all felt like we were ready to sign on to the demands. That would be amazing. If it meant that Nan came in next meeting and we had to uh, postpone or have more discussion um, and kind mm -hmm. of come back to do a vote the following meeting, um, and that didn't happen until April, it would still be beneficial. I don't think that there's going to be a negative um, outcome on anything in terms of timeline other than just the more we are able to, the more time we're able to give people to understand that there's a letter that's out there from us, the better. Does that make sense? Okay, yes. 
I also, I don't know how people feel about this, but I'm happy to make a motion to um, form a community activism subcommittee comprised of anyone who wishes to sign yes and sign yes on behalf of a community action subcommittee. Brian, is that procedurally sticky? <laughs> or is that acceptable? <laughs> Brian left the building. <laughs> Does anyone else have thoughts on Kathy? Is that I mean, could this be part of the equity committee? I mean, be part of that whole committee, this sort of thing? Not everyone on the equity committee is convinced. <laughs> I, I'm here. Yeah. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm, I just uh, was listening. But, uh, <laughs> I don't know that it makes sense to form a committee just to get signers on one letter unless there's intention for that committee to then exist with other goals and purposes beyond that. Um, Good call. Do, does it make a difference if it's signed by council or, or ink board members? You know, could like the ink board, you know, support it, um, but the municipal board, uh, the municipal council doesn't sign on. I think if the ink board would support it, the, the more the merrier is, uh, is the bottom line on that. Um, I think that there is a certain uh, resonance to the council supporting it, um, but I would definitely pass it to the ink board to, um, to sign at, at, their, at their... I think at any point, if we, the ink or the municipal board, they're like too inextricably linked so when you say Northampton Arts Council Board, it, it kind of symbolically means both because right. they're hard to separate. So I think this is down to the municipal board um, determining whether or not they, wanna, the, they want to sign on to support this. Um, uh, and in the community action part, uh, I like what Rachel said about that. And I just wanna make sure that we know that we're still an arts council. I, yeah, I, I, yes. And there's a lot of issues to deal so with, but, you know, and we can do it, I think, not creating another subcommittee. I think this can get done in a way without creating a subcommittee. And I would encourage everybody to um, uh, answer the poll that I put up. And uh, I don't know if everybody can see that. Can you, everybody see the answers to the poll or no? I don't know how it, so no, only, only I can see it. Where is it? Their results after it, people. Up, it came up before, but then it's gone. I don't know where it went. Y'all probably have to scroll up to it, I think. In the chat? No. It's in the bottom button. I just put a screenshot of what it, the, the results are. I'm just missing three people are missing. We're missing three answers from the where 14 is it? people. I don't, I don't have it. We are at 73% yes, 18% no, 9% maybe. <laughs> Even answer it. It went down. Well, to that is a majority. Um, I think you can click on polling on the bottom. I don't know how it looks. I think only the admin. There it is. Oh, here it is. I know, um, I just wanna real quick say, Brian, I know you said this is an arts council, which is true, but I feel really strongly as a new member that these things are inextricably linked. The health of communities and social justice and the arts are very connected. And I think we have to acknowledge that in, in the way we're thoughtful about things. And if we're trying to think about equity and scoring things like how we're, making statements in the community, I think is all part of that too. I agree with Dana, art is yeah. very political and we can't escape that. Absolutely it is. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it goes just really quickly. It also goes to spatial justice, racial justice, spatial social justice is how we live in spaces, who controls those spaces, who has equal access to them. So it's all interconnected completely. I was just making a reference of creating another subcommittee. Yeah. <laughs> Philosophically, I agree with everybody, everybody, I get that everything too. everybody's saying. <laughs> yeah. And um, I will add that the other parts of Nen's 
letter to the council are ripe for that kind of subcommittee's activity. Yes. Um, and we do get a lot of proposals um, mm -hmm. that might get better attention if that committee committee is formed. So I'm not saying it shouldn't be formed. I'm just saying it shouldn't be formed for the purpose of a letter, but if there's more work to it, then. Well, I am hearing some strong support for the letter. I'm also hearing like a little bit of, I wanna learn more, which is so valid and so important. But I'm thinking about the folks who are, are on the really strong support side. Are there other things that you would want the, the Arts Council to do. Like, I wondered if we should make a statement regarding the budget to make sure that, you know, our, our staff uh, budgets, so that's something I talked to Brian about already, right? So those are things I'm definitely interested in. I think there are ways that we can do advocacy, public advocacy work, community action, mutual aid, like those are things that are, that we do in little ways. So if folks want to organize around that and be in charge of setting up the meeting with Nan, and having a pre-conversation about where the board is at. Like, I, I imagine that there's some utility there. And I imagine that in five years from now, maybe maybe I, I pray, I hope that the issue won't be divest or defund. There was gonna be something else that is really, hopefully urgent to our community that, that that group could potentially help support and tackle. So if there's interest, I'm, I'm happy to, I, I don't know that I'm allowed on any more subcommittees, but <laughs> I, I, I nominate people and I'm happy to support it however I can. If you I'm, take I'm, up, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Freeman, sorry. I'm, I'm a little confused. It, is it possible, are, are we going to go ahead and write a letter of support of the mission and vision? I mean, that we could do if there's agreement to that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know if there is agreement. I, I'm, I'm not clear about that. I don't know if that was asked, but I'm certainly comfortable with that. And um, I, I would just like to say that while it's true that that um, that art is there's the, the politics of art, uh, and art is political. Um, I, I feel that. Right now in our society, every decision that gets made by elected officials should be viewed in the context of uh, anti-racist behavior, right? And implications. What is it doing to dismantle white supremacy, white privilege? I mean, I, I, I think that, that, you know, I think that's the, for me, that's the important message right now. That's the important activity that that we should, should insist from our elected officials, you don't discuss something right now, you don't enact something right now, unless it's addressing what's the implication of this for marginalized communities, for people of color. I mean, I think, you know, making a statement like that, let, as it's embedded in our, in our mission, in our equity statement, I think, that, I think that's critical right now. And I have no problem supporting that. I would just like to say that. I would love to see us write a letter of that sort. Well, I think, thank you, Freeman. I think that's, um, it's, I would definitely second that. I would also argue that um, the demands of Nan are speaking directly towards that and that um, the biggest white supremacist network that exists in any town is the police department, which is why that has been focused on as the source of defunding because it offers the most violence and um, uh, bias against marginalized people. I totally get that. I, I understand that and I think that I see that the truth of that. I, I, I wanna add like kind of a, a soft discussion point. Um, like it's not a hard fact, but it it's, because I believe in the ideology of Nan, uh, I like. I personally don't like the percentage number on the demands doesn't matter as much to me, because I'm signing on to what I like. It's a vote of the direction I want to see us going in, knowing that it's unlikely that the number is going to get hit exactly but it's a big step in that direction so that 
we get somewhere closer to progress, you know? So it, not much in the way that, uh, you know, we talked about encouraging applicants to ask for more money than they need, uh, knowing that they're not gonna get fully funded. I None of that sits well with me. I wish it were a cleaner, more perfect world and we can just like ask for what we truly want and need. But I, I think we're kind of operating within a system where we need to, ask for what there's momentum behind and maybe over ask in order to, to make a step in that right direction. So that's some of the process I, I look at when reading demands, it can seem really literal, but it's um, in the end, it's like, do I align with this and do I wanna support it in the direction it's going in? And when a city reads it and achieves half of what's on the list, will I be happy <laughs> with that? Yeah. Yeah, I, that's the thanks, Rachel. Yeah, I mean, I think Ashlyn brought up a good point earlier that you know this in the 2020 discussing the 2021 police budget, the initial demand was a 50% reduction, and it got whittled down to 10%. So it's not like asking for a 50% reduction is necessarily going to be the amount that happens. Would it? Would it be? Would the people who are making the demands be happy if that were true? Yes, but I think that all of this you know, has uh, a component in reality versus um, actualization, or is that the same thing? Actualization versus um, desire. So I think that's, that's all to be taken into account. Yeah. Go ahead, Ashlyn. Oh, I was just gonna, um give a last statement about like, um, yeah. And I think I think what it comes down to is just like recognizing what this is too, is that that the that this is a call for abolition. And um, as abolition, like, um, whether it goes back to the 1800s or to modern day abolition, which is with police and, and the prison system. Um, the yeah the more you asked the more you'll usually get but also like actual abolition would be asking for complete defund a hundred percent but we know with how right of center even though we do have more left-leaning representation in the state of Massachusetts there still is a pull that if someone were to come in and, and this organization were to come in and say 100% or that's not, nothing's gonna happen. So 50 is within the working range. And and I mean, honestly, if it were actual abolition, it would be complete like um, abolishment of the police department. But, you know, the, they're, they're trying to, um, address this in less, uh, less of a, I can tell that they're trying to address it in less of a theoretical term and, and a living off of definition and everything and more of practicality. And I think these list of demands are practical, but yeah. I think um, it's time to end the meeting myself. Um, Danielle or and Jesse? If you folks are inviting somebody from AM to the next meeting, I, I mean, I think you need to keep it encapsulated some so that we could do other board, you know, the committee stuff, which we haven't gotten to tonight. Um, I'm just somewhat a little concerned about it, just making sure we can cover everything we need to. Yeah, totally. I mean, it'll be you know, I'm assuming it'll be one of a number of things on the agenda and we'll set aside a certain amount of time for it, just like we did set aside a certain amount of time for the discussion around the um, grant tonight. Brian, do we have a set amount of time that we normally give for public comment, even though we don't often have public comment? Is it like 15 minutes or something? <clears throat> Hour. There's there's no set amount of time. I think uh, when you're in city council, you get three minutes a person. Uh, so, but this isn't city council. It's a it's a council. Yeah. It's the arts council. So, 
And that usually happens in the beginning of the meeting and you can send public comment in all the way up until the meeting. So you can send in um, letters and emails and stuff like that. And uh, if we're gonna get a lot of people to do public comment, it'd be nice to get to know ahead of time so I can put them put the people on the agenda or like know how much time it will take to go through public comment. Okay, um, maybe it shouldn't be public comment then, but I wonder if we can, can we invite Nan to speak for 15 minutes and then have 15 minutes of Q&A? Uh, okay. Yeah, it's, again, it's your time, it's your time. So um, yeah, that was why it was tough to do the, uh, yeah, that's, that's totally fine. So that we just have a lot of other arts council business to, to get to, including, um, what was it, the Poet Laureate today. Um, but that's the only thing that was on the updates. And then the artist, uh, I guess we have to table all this stuff. And then we're gonna talk about the equity committee, um, the biennial and the poet laureate updates and all the other stuff we can talk about another time. Um, but yes. most of, go ahead. Well, I'm wondering if Jesse, if you think that that feels like an okay amount of time and then if and then to the board members, if Nan sends us like two or three articles of recommended reading beforehand so that we can make the most of their presentation, because I think 15 minutes is a really short amount of time to ask them, but I do want to be really respectful of all the other stuff we have to get through. Yeah, yeah. totally. I mean, I don't, I don't want to taking up um, everything. I think that we need to get to our own, um, our own points of discussion as well, obviously. Um, I think what would help would we can I can we can definitely ask for uh, something to be sent to us. Um, I think that uh, we should probably just take a look at the letter again because there are some links in there that um, are helpful and those were things that they did already send to us. Um, but if we can make it, if we can get word to them in terms of what exactly we would like to know more about. So, um, you know, Freeman, I hear you about the 50%, um, like where did that number come from? Um, if there are certain points that we want to specifically, um, that maybe some people are specifically stuck on around the demands that they would like some elaboration on, that would be most helpful and use the time most wisely so that uh, somebody from NAN could come in and talk on those points specifically. And then we can have a short dialogue from there because it sounds like the general idea behind um, the reallocation and establishing the Department of Community Care um, is pretty much unanimous from the discussion that I've heard tonight. So um, if there's something aside from the specificity of the 50%, um, I think that if you know, we can send, we can get an email together um, with some bullet points of, on those facts and get it to Nan so that they can have a presentation for us. Sounds like we have a process going forward. It's 9.51. Um, yeah. I'm gonna table everything until next meeting. Um, and uh, thank you for a really a good discussion around really important um, matters in our community. Uh, I would just encourage everybody, if you can, to um, look forward to watching some of the four Sundays or look what we have on our website uh, around their programming. Um, thank you for that, Lil. Okay. And then um, I'll see you, uh, everyone, um, next month. And in the meantime, you know, uh, we can communicate in subcommittee. And if a subcommittee wants to have a meeting, specifically the equity committee, soon to discuss uh, race, or race and gender equity training for the entire board, that would be good, as well as the next year's grant round and things like that, that'd be good. So I would leave it to one of the, the committee members. And if you want to join that committee, just let me know. Um, uh, any of the committees on the on the agenda here, you can join. You have to just let me know, and I will put you on that committee. Um, so I'm going to leave it to the subcommittees to have their own meetings. The poet laureate and the um, biennial committee have been meeting regularly and have some updates, but we'll talk about them. I, is that going to be okay? Uh, where did Ellen go? Is that going to be okay for next board meeting? Yeah. 
I, I think we can move on. We have a meeting um, at the end of the month. I think we'll put together a call and stuff. Okay, so you'll have yeah, some. I think tonight we would we get to some stuff, but I think it's okay that we don't. Okay. Um, can I? I just want to. I just want to say that Ellen, I, I was so excited seeing that you guys had put that together. I I was listening to. Um, my son's got me a uh, a master class, a subscription to master class uh, for the holidays, and I was listening to uh, Billy Collins. Oh. um do his master class and it was just wonderful to be thinking I'm, I'm really excited about seeing that junior poet laureate that was mostly karen's work yeah it was it was um, that, it was that letter that was wonderful i've got to go i i have to go too i got to take care of a sick friend so bye everybody bye good night everybody bye thanks everyone